76 relocation of Uchiha clan inside the Leaf Village Hospital. Aizuna's chakra recovers enough to trigger his healing factor. The wound around his stomach heals at a rapid pace. In a few moments, his wound closes and Aizuna gains consciousness. Tsunade who is examining a medical report nearby notices the change in Aizuna's body. This is incredible. Aizuna opens his eyes groggily and inspects his surroundings. He lies on a bed with an IV drip attached to him. Aizuna slowly stands up and removes the four drip. Kid, you finally gained consciousness. How are you feeling right now? As a medic, you must know your condition better than anyone else. Aizuna flexes his hands and muscles. The soreness he felt earlier fades away. He takes a few steps and stands in front of Tsunade and bows to her. Thank you, Tsunade-san. I have recovered from my injuries and I am good to go. You should thank Hiruzen sensei He was the one who sent you here. You were in terrible shape when you arrived here? Also, what was that just now, kid? Your healing was almost on the same level as my creation rebirth, if not higher. Tsunade curiously looked at Aizuna. Ugh, how to explain this to her? Aizuna stays silent. Tsunade sighs and remarks. I know every ninja has their own secrets and techniques. If you don't want to reveal it, then it is fine with me. But you can always trust me. Thank you, Tsunade-san. I hope you won't mention this to anyone. I will reveal everything to you in the future. Suddenly something clicks in Aizuna's head and he anxiously questions Tsunade. tsunade san where is Naruto, the son of Minato and Kushina? He was with me before I lost consciousness. Calm down, Aizuna. Naruto is fine. Hiruzen sensei is taking care of him for now. He will eventually assign a caretaker for Naruto. Tsunade calms down Aizuna. tsunade san I have a request for you if you are fine with it. Aizuna requests Tsunade. Well, make your request. I will fulfill it if it's within my capabilities. Tsunade assures Aizuna. tsunade san the village won't allow me to take care of Naruto. I am an Uchiha and many elders will be against the decision. So, I would like to request you to take care of Naruto for at least five years. You can leave him when he enters the academy. At that time, I will personally train Naruto. This was the last wish of Minato and Kushina. I hope you agree with me. Tsunade ponders for a while before sighing. Fine, I will take care of Naruto. Initially, I planned to leave the village with Shizun. But your request has delayed my departure. I will talk to Sensei about this matter. Also, Naruto is a part of Zumaki like me. So, it makes us a family. I will be his godmother and take care of him. Tsunade agrees with Aizuna's request. Also, Hiruzen sensei wants to know the details of the entire incident from you. Apparently, you are the only survivor who knows about the details. I will answer all of his questions after the funeral. Aizuna changes his clothes and teleports from the spot. Later during the funeral ceremony, Aizuna joins other Uchihas in mourning. He silently stares at the crying baby Naruto placed in a basket in front of the symbol of will of fire. Hiruzen walks forward and addresses the ceremony. We lost many lives, including the fourth Hokage Minato and his wife, Kushina Uzumaki. The facts behind the incident are still unknown. But for now, let us mourn our comrades. All the shinobis silently pay their respect to their dead comrades. Tsunade walks to the basket and picks Naruto in her arms. TCH. Danzo clicks his tongue and stares at Hiruzen. Hiruzen ignores Danzo and continues with the ceremony. At least, Naruto won't have a miserable childhood this way. Minato and Kushina, this is the best I can do for the current Naruto. He needs motherly love and Tsunade will be an excellent mother. Aizuna stares at the departing back of Tsunade and other villagers. Inside the private room, Danzo slams his hands on the table and questions Hiruzen. Hiruzen, what's the meaning of this? Why would you allow Tsunade to take care of that Jinchuriki? You also know how irresponsible she is. Danzo, I won't hear any question on this matter. Tsunade volunteered to take care of Naruto. Also, both of them are part Azumaki. I will change Naruto's last name to Azumaki to prevent Minato's enemy from hunting down his son. Staying with Tsunade will also grant him additional protection. Hiruzen rebukes Danzo. We agree with Hiruzen's decision. We have other important matters to handle. Almost Onet herd of central Kanaha was destroyed. We have to conduct a meeting with various clan heads to discuss reconstruction and relocation. Kohara and Homura discuss serious matters. Let us summon them and start the meeting. Inside the large meeting room, Hiruzen, Koharu, and Homura sit on elder seats with various clan leaders seated around a table. A large map of Kanaha is placed on the table, and Danzo explains the plans to clan leaders. With a long stick in his hands, Danzo moves back and forth around the table as he explains. The Nine Tails caused major devastation throughout the village. Almost Onet herd of the village is destroyed. For the reconstruction, we have decided to revise a number of the village's boundaries. He points the stick at a certain part of the map and explains. We'd like the Abarame clan to move into this district. The clan previously submitted a request to occupy the forest, so we took that into consideration. Shivi Abarame nods to Danzo, and Danzo continues. The Nara clan's territory was not part of the stricken area, so they will remain where they are. The Leaf Police Force headquarters which sustained damage will be rebuilt here. Danzo points at the furthest end of the village, almost near the outer periphery of the village. Fugaku frowns at this decision. And the Uchiha clan will move along with the headquarters. Fugaku stands up and slams his hands on the table. Lord Danzo? The Uchiha clan makes up the Leaf Police Force that protects the hidden leaf. 
As such, that location is too far from the village center. We wouldn't be able to act swiftly in an emergency. Other clan leaders nod in agreement. Danzo cuts off Fugaku and argues. We have the Umbu Black Ops for such emergencies. The Leaf Police has to commute to the training ground, does it not? This location is near an area that's ideal for training. You can use that area exclusively for the Uchiha's training grounds. Hiruzen points out the facts. Continuing on. In conjunction with the reconstruction of the Leaf Police headquarters, the Uchiha clan will also relocate. Home and buildings that were spared will be. Danzo continues to explain the construction plans. Inside the Naka Shrine, many Leaf Police force members gathered for a secret meeting. Fugaku and an elder led the meeting. Izuna walks to the Naka Shrine and notices Itaki at the Tori Gate of Shrine. How are you doing, Itaki? Izuna questions him. I am doing fine, Izuna and I Father has summoned you for the meeting. Itaki replies to Izuna. Izuna walks inside the Naka Shrine and meets with Fugaku. So, the dog of Umbu has appeared for the meeting. One of the police force members taunts Izuna. What are you doing at this secret meeting? Another police member questions him. What I am doing here is none of your business. Izuna activates his Sherry Non and stares at the police member. The police force members activate his Sherry Non and stare back at Izuna. Izuna murmurs. Jinjutsu, Sherry Non. The police force member sweats profusely and pants heavily. Another member tries to dispel the Jinjutsu but fails. Enough, stop this unnecessary quarrel right now. Fugaku bellows. Izuna dispels the Jinjutsu and walks in front of Fugaku. You have summoned me, clan leader. Yes, today we are conducting a secret clan meeting and you are also one of the elites of the clan. We will start the meeting now. Fugaku signals to start the discussion. During the Nine Tails incident, we Uchiha were not credited because they feared that we used our Sherry Non to manipulate the Nine Tails. One of the Uchiha member remarks. Even worse, there are some who say that the Uchiha caused the Nine Tails incident. Another member yells. They are sending us to the outskirts of the village to keep an eye on us. Another member states his opinion. This is just like during the second Hokage's era when the Uchiha were rounded up and isolated in one part of the village. Another member complains. This time, it is even further away, the village suspects us. Another member chimes in. Captain, we can't accept this decision. We should reject this outright. One of the members riles up the crowd. Captain, 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 all of them shout in unison. You are absolutely right. But the other clans have accepted their respective relocations as well. The Uchiha cannot be the lone voice of dissent. Fugaku interrupts them. But Captain, I'll do what I can to negotiate the conditions. But we must accept the move. Pass the word around. That is all. Dismissed. Fugaku dismisses them. Izuna stands and starts to walk away but is interrupted by Fugaku. Izuna, stay behind. I have some matters to discuss with you. Izuna stops in his tracks and waits for Fugaku to speak. After a while, when all members dispersed, Fugaku speaks. Izuna, you have been part of Umbu since the tenure of the last Hokage. So, this makes you a trustworthy person in the eyes of Hokage. I would like you to monitor village elders, especially Danzo Shimura and the Hokage, and report their matters to me. The welfare of the clan should be prioritized. I don't want our Uchiha clan to fade in the annals of history similar to the Senja clan. You will be our spy in the Umbu. What? He wants me to spy in Umbu. I don't want the Uchiha clan to go extinct. I will act accordingly for the betterment of my family. Yes, clan leader. I will take care of that. Fugaku nods and dismisses Izuna. I am strong enough to deal with Danzo. But first, I have to collect proofs against him. Orokimuro is still in the village. After Orokimuro leaves the village, I will put my plan into action. Izuna is lost in his thoughts as he flickers towards his house. 77 Interrogation Izuna is packing the luggage with his family. Their house survived the Nine Tails attack, but they had to shift to a new location. Izuna picks up lots of his luggage and makes some hand signs and store it in a scroll. In closing technique. My, my, that's too convenient Izunakan. Fumiko looks at Izuna in amazement. Izuna scratches his head and replies. I learned Funjutsu techniques from 4th Hokage and his wife, Kushina Uzumaki, Izuna replies with a sad expression. The atmosphere turns gloomy. Akira, Yagami, Aiko, Fumiko, and Shisui silently stare at Izuna. An umbu flickers and appears in front of Izuna. Vice Captain, Hokage Sama has summoned you. Please follow me to the Hokage office. The umbu whispers to Izuna. Izuna flickers towards Hokage's office and the umbu member follow him. Inside the Hokage office, Hiruzen sat on a table with eyes closed. Danzo, Koharu, and Homura stand in front of him. Hiruzen, I would like to watch the interrogation. I just want to hear the details of the incident. Danzo demands. We would also watch the interrogation. Koharu and Homura states. Danzo, the kid has done no crime. He is a trusted member of Umbu who has progressed in ranks with his merits. Reaching vice captain rank in a year speaks for his talents and skills. You don't have to be skeptical about him. He was very close to Minato and Kushina from his childhood. I don't doubt the credibility of his words. Hiruzen defends Izuna. Hiruzen, the Nine Tails attack has heavy involvement of the Uchiha clan. You want me to believe this incident does not involve the kid. I had checked the records of his presence in village. For the past three months, he was away from the village. Just before the Nine Tails attack he miraculously appeared out of nowhere. 
He even survived the attack against Ninetales, which killed the fourth Hokage and his wife. Do you want me to believe his story? Danzo persists. Fine, I will call the Inoichi of the Yamanaka clan to monitor the kid. He will be easily able to spot any lies mixed within the truth. Hiruzen agrees to Danzo. No, that won't do. He is an Umbu captain. He specializes in information gathering and disposal. Tell Inoichi to use the psycho mind transmission technique of their clan to enter inside the kid's subconsciousness and search his memories. I will send one of my root members to extract information from the kid. Danzo adds another condition. Danzo, your action might earn us his distrust. Are you sure you want to do such a thing? Hiruzen questions. I will go to any extent for the sake of village. This is a grave matter. Many villagers lost their lives. I won't sit quietly in this situation. Danzo continues. Yes, Hiruzen. Danzo is right in this matter. We agree with him, it is better to take some necessary precautions than betting on circumstances. Also, we hope that as an Umbu vice captain, he will understand the graveness of matter. Kohara and Homura agree with Danzo. Hiruzen rubs his forehead and sighs. Fine, I agree with your terms. I just hope that it won't earn us the distrust of Uchiha clan. In a separate room, Aizuna arrives with the Umbu member. The Umbu member explains things to Aizuna. Vice Captain, you are aware of the recent development of events. You are the sole survivor of the attack who knows the information of the culprit. Hokage Sama, just want to ask some questions from you regarding the incident? We hope for your cooperation. Aizuna looks at the surrounding Umbu members and nods to them. It's fine. I will comply. There is nothing to hide in this situation. Please, Vice Captain. The Umbu member leads Aizuna inside a closed room with a chair in the center. Aizuna sits on the chair and closes his eyes and patiently waits for Hiruzen's arrival. A few minutes later, Hiruzen together with other elders and Inoichi Yamanaka arrives inside the room. Other members of Kanaha's torture and interrogation force follow them closely. Aizuna Achiha, I don't doubt your credibility and merits. It is just that the recent events had a tremendous impact on the village. I hope for your cooperation. Hiruzen walks in front of Aizuna and speaks to him. Aizuna nods his head and replies. I will follow your instructions. As long as the questions aren't related to my secrets and powers, I will answer them. Very well, let us start with the details of the Ninetales attack. Hiruzen questions Aizuna. Narrate the entire series of events for us. Aizuna narrates the entire incident involving the Ninetales. How Minato used Reaper Death Seal to seal Ninetales. How he used the eight Trigram Seals to make Naruto the Nujinshuriki. How Ninetales in a struggle to save itself mortally wounded Minato and Kushina. Hiruzen looks toward Inoichi, who nods his head. Hiruzen continues. Can you describe the characteristics of the assailant? You must have faced against them. The assailant used space-time ninjutsu to breach the barrier. He wore a onide mask white mask with some markings. He extracted Kibi from Kushina and attacked the village. Aizuna explains. That's not all the details, I am sure you know much more. Danzo interrupts the interrogation. Yes, there are other details, but they aren't relevant to the Ninetales attack. Aizuna calmly replies to Danzo. Then can you explain those extra details? We are interested to hear the entire details, Danzo presses the matter. If you want to hear them so badly, then listen. A powerful entity attacked us while we were fighting against the Nine Tails. He easily destroyed our barrier with a snap of his fingers and pushed back the combined might of Minato, Kushina, and me. His target was me for some unknown reasons. He captured me and flew away from the village. I could somehow escape from his grasp thanks to my abilities. And you know the later series of events. Also, I am sure some of you must have sensed the massive influx of Chakra. That was the Chakra of that entity. I would rather advise all of you to get ready to face against him rather than playing some politics and power game. Aizuna looks towards Danzo and scoffs. Aizuna, if it is fine with you then can you allow Inoichi Yamanaka to enter your subconscious and allow him to relay the series of events to us? Hiruzen inquires. I will only relay important information about the attack. I will hide all of my secrets and jutsus. If you agree with my conditions, then you can continue. Aizuna states his condition. Very well, I have no problem with your condition. Hiruzen nods his head. Inoichi slowly enters Aizuna's subconscious mind. Aizuna sorts all of his memories of the Ninetales attack and presents them to Inoichi, who relays them to others using a special device. So, that's how it is. Now, we have an important clue regarding this matter. Kanaha won't sit idle and find the perpetrator of the attack. Hiruzen clenches his fist in anger. I am not satisfied yet. Danzo interrupts Hiruzen and signals his root member. The root member walks up to Aizuna and places his hand on top of Aizuna's head and enters his mind together with Inoichi. Danzo, stop it. It will put a mental burden on that kid's consciousness. Hiruzen tries to stop Danzo. Inside the Aizuna's subconsciousness, the root member forcibly tries to break all the mental barriers and blocks. I have to get the information required by Danzo-sama. Danzo-sama wants me to unveil all the secrets of this kid. I have got this chance. I won't spare even a small piece of information. I have to scavenge all of his secrets. Before the root member could intrude further, a pair of large sherry nons appears in Aizuna's subconscious mind. Another purple and blue eyes appear with sherry non. Genjutsu. Five senses breakdown. The Sherinan casts a powerful Genjutsu on the root member. The root member suffers a backlash. His body slowly limps on the ground. 
Foam froths from his mouth and blood leaks from his eyes, ears, and nose. He lies on the ground and his body twitches uncontrollably. Even Inoichi suffers from backlash, but his condition is much better. Inoichi's entire body is covered in sweat and pants heavily. What was that? Thankfully, it wasn't directed at me or I would have suffered the same fate as this guy. Inoichi sighs in relief and looks at the twitching root member. Immediately, two root members beside Danzo flickers in front of the root umbu and carries him with them. One of them walks towards Danzo and silently conveys some information. TCH. Danzo silently clicks his tongue. Anger is apparent on his face. What's the meaning of this? Danzo bellows at Izuna. You have permanently injured the mind of one of my elite of root. What excuse do you have for your crimes? He continues. This root member tried to infringe on my secrets and techniques despite my warnings. He suffered a backlash from my mental barriers in his attempts. If you want to blame someone, then blame him. I did not fault in this matter. Izuna replies without even looking at Danzo. I hope you have got your answers. I have matters to attend to. I will take my leave. Izuna continues. Hiruzen nods at him. Izuna stands up and flickers away from the interrogation room. Danzo clenches his fist and walks out of the room. His root lackeys follow him. 78 The last mission three years passed in the blink of an eye. Izuna has been regularly doing missions in Umbu. He has become the captain of Team Ro because of his contributions. During this time, he will sometimes train with Itaki and Shisui. Itaka has graduated from the academy and recently became a genin. Orokimuru had escaped the village when Hiruzen found out about his experiments. Kakashi was able to get over his grief from the death of all his team members thanks to Izuna and Sakumo. Sakumo personally trained Kakashi and Kakashi grew a lot stronger. Initially, Kakashi faced a lot of problems with the management of Chakra. Izuna solved the problem of the Chakra drain caused by Sherinan. He created a Funjutsu seal to deactivate Kakashi's Sherinan. Kakashi had to form a REM seal to activate the Sherinan. Kakashi still adopted his usual style of covering his left eye with a headband. Izuna lies on the training ground while monitoring the progress of Shisui and Itaki. Both of them have grown stronger than their original counterpart thanks to Izuna's training. Izuna will secretly train Shisui in the construction of Suzano. Shisui quickly grasped the technique and improve at a rapid rate. Now, he can make an upper body humanoid Suzano. I have successfully mastered many other Kekai Genkai nature transformations. I have to figure out a way to learn Sage Mode. If I can learn the Six Paths Sage Mode then I can easily heal Minato and Kushina. The Sin Seal has stopped bothering me. The Yin Half of Nine Tails provides ample amounts of Chakra for the Seal to suck dry. In my current state, I can easily defeat Grandpa Madara with his eternal Mangekyo Sharinan. As for Rinnegan, let's not talk about that. I am currently the strongest shinobi of the shinobi world, excluding the Atsutsukis and that unknown cloaked person. A shiver ran down Aizuna's spine when he thought about that fight. Who was he? He is aware of this sin seal and its powers. I refuse to believe I killed him with that attack. I don't know the extent of his powers. But if I have to make a guess, then he is at least as strong as Momoshiki Atsutsuki. I wonder what happened to him after my attack. Aizuna shakes his head and quietly stares at the interactions of Shisui and Itaki. A young Suzuki walks up to him and lies beside him. Aizen and Aizen, teach me a jutsu. Father won't teach me any jutsu, and Itaki Aizen is busy training with Shisui Aizen. Only you can teach me a jutsu now. Suzuki stares at Aizuna with his puppy eyes as he puffs up his cheeks. Aizuna pokes Suzuki's cheeks and reply, Suzuki, you are only four this year, why do you want to learn ninjutsu this quickly? Aizen, I want father to praise me just like Itaki Aizen. So, Aizen, please teach me a jutsu. Suzuki stares at Aizuna with puppy eyes. Ah, so, cute. I can't say no to such a cute expression. Aizuna pulls Suzuki's cheeks. Okay, I will teach you fire style, great fireball jutsu. You can later impress Uncle Fugaku with the jutsu. Now, follow me to the nearby lake. I will show you the hand signs for the jutsu. Memorize them and practice slowly. Aizuna walks to the Uchiha lake and slowly makes the hand signs for the technique. Fire style, great fireball technique. He spews out a large fireball above the lake. Lots of lake water evaporates from the jutsu. Now, it's your turn. Suzuki haphazardly makes the hand signs and spew out a small orb of fire that flickers for a while before extinguishing. Suzuki drops his head depressingly. Aizuna rubs Suzuki's forehead. Don't be sad, Suzuki. You did well for your first attempt. If you practice diligently, you will eventually reach the same level as me. Aizuna cheers up Suzuki. Come, I will treat you to your favorite popsicle. Yay, you are the best Nai Aizen. Suzuki hugs Aizuna. Aizuna and Suzuki walk through new Uchiha compounds while licking a popsicle. Aizuna receives a signal from a nearby hidden Umbu member. He stops in his footsteps and urges Suzuki to continue. Suzuki, Big Brother has some urgent work to handle. Go and play with your friends. Also, don't be mean to Naruto. Don't allow others to bully him. He is also my younger brother, just like you. So, that makes you an elder brother to him. Protect your younger brother from bullies. Suzuki puffs his cheeks in annoyance. Nyaizen, why I have to take care of that Baka Naruto? Aizuna gently strokes Suzuki's head. He is the son of my late teacher. So, it is my responsibility to take care of him. If you take care of Naruto and protect him from bullies, I will teach you many cool new jutsus. Aizuna tries to entice Suzuki. 
If you say so, I will play with Naruto and protect him from other bullies. Suzuki nods his head. You can also call him during your training. I will teach both of you. Now, Big Brother has to go. Aizuna vanishes from the spot in a burst of particles. Wow, so cool. I want to learn this jutsu. Suzuki looks with shining eyes. Inside the Hokage's office, Aizuna appears in front of Hiruzen in his Ambu costume. You summoned me Hokage-sama. Aizuna bows in front of Hiruzen and waits for his orders. It has been four years since you joined the Ambu. From a normal member to a captain, you have risen in ranks quickly. I have received your request for retirement from Ambu. I would like to know the reason behind the request. Your career as a shinobi is at its peak, and Ambu lacks geniuses like you. It would be a waste to let go of such talent from Ambu. Hiruzen stares at Aizuna. Aizuna removes his Ambu mask and replies to Hiruzen. I had my fair share of bloody battles and missions throughout my career as an Ambu. I am tired of all this bloodshed and I would like to explore the world outside Kanaha. So, after my retirement, I will journey across the shinobi world. Also, I have hit a plateau in my growth recently. I have mastered and honed my skills in these three years. I am not a rookie with a lack of experience anymore. I have to figure out a way to master Senjutsu or Sage Mode. I will start with Shikotsu Forest. Then there is a lack of proper summoning creatures for me. I haven't been able to form a proper contract yet. The Sin Seal won't allow me to form a contract. Hiruzen contemplates for a while before he replies. I will process your request as soon as possible. But before you retire from Umbu, I have a last mission for you as an Umbu captain. Please, Hokage-sama, I will complete the mission. Aizuna nods to Hiruzen. Hum. A Megakur has been suffering from a civil war since the Third Shinobi War. Hanzo's rule in aim lead to many bloody slaughters and large-scale genocides. Recently, a new organization called Akatsuki has appeared. You are aware of the fact that Orokimaru escaped from the village this year. I have my suspicion of him joining this organization. Hiruzen picks up a file from the table and passes it to Aizuna. Aizuna schemes through the file while listening to details from Hiruzen. We don't have any detailed information on this organization. But from our sources, we have tracked the origin of this organization to a Megakur. Our previous attempts to gather any intelligence failed miserably. All of our previous spies are missing in action or murdered in cold blood. Hiruzen passes another list with the name of spies and their duration of mission in a Megakur. Hiruzen continues. Danzo previously lead his root team to investigate the matter. But I had lost trust in him after his recent attempt to assassinate me. He has grown quite power hungry in all these years. But I can't remove him, his root is too crucial for the survival of village. Hiruzen sighs and reminisces about his past. Sensei, I have failed the last mission you gave me. Danzo became the darkness of the village, but he is slowly getting consumed by this darkness. I can't bring myself to kill my disciple and now my lifelong friend. I am too soft-hearted. Hiruzen takes a deep breath and continues. I have issued this top secret mission to you. It will be an infiltration mission. Infiltrate the Omega Core and gather intelligence on the current situation of AIM. Also, remember, if the situation turns too dangerous to continue the mission, immediately abandon the mission and retreat to Kanaha. You are the third person to master the Flying Thunder God Jetsu. Your life is far more valuable than any intel. It won't be an issue for you to escape from enemies' encirclement. Now dismiss. Hiruzen dismisses Aizuna. Aizuna disappears from the spot in a burst of particles. I still can't get used to this kid's technique. Hiruzen slumps down on Hokage's chair and smokes from his pipe. Orikimaru, I hope I haven't made a mistake to allow you to live. Hiruzen contemplates while smoking from his pipe. He pulls out the drawer and picks up a large crystal sphere. It's time to watch the progress of Kanaha's new seedlings. 79 Infiltrating a Megakur Aizuna walks out of Hokage office to prepare for his departure. This infiltration mission is going to take some time. I will depart after meeting with Naruto. Aizuna flickers towards Senju compounds. He enters Senju compounds and enters Tsunade's house. Naruto. Naruto. Naruto had just left the house. He is out in the playground to play with his friends. Shizun walks out of the house and answers to Aizuna. Thanks, Shizun-san. Aizuna thanks Shizun. Kid, come here. I need your help. Tsunade shouts from inside. Aizuna and Shizun shake their head, and Aizuna enters inside the house. Kid, you are quite rich. You have done plenty of S-rank missions. Loan me a few million ryos for a while, I will repay you in the future. Tsunade gestures Aizuna. Tsunade-san, you have yet to return the previous 10 million ryo. I won't lend any more money to you. Why don't you stop gambling and choose something else as your hobby? Aizuna questions her. You are no fun, kid. You don't know the thrill of gambling. Betting money on an uncertain outcome and then excitingly wait for the result. Tsunade hypes up. There is no thrill when you know the outcome already. No matter what, you will lose every single gambling match. Why don't you gamble with your money? Aizuna rebukes Tsunade. I have to take care of Naruto with my money. My expenses are too high and Naruto is a growing kid. Poor me. Tsunade sulks. You and poor? Not in a billion years. You received the Senju clan's inheritance. That's a lot of money and you get a hefty salary from Kanaha's hospital. I will take custody of all of your expensive sake. Aizuna stands up and kicks the nearby floor. A wine cellar popped up. There are many expensive sakes and wines lined together in the cellar. Aizuna sucked all of them in a storage scroll. Tsunade looked at him with teary eyes. This is my installment for the 10 million ryo. 
Tell me if you have more money to repay me. I will take my leave then. I have a mission to do. Izuna walks out of Tsunade's residence. Tsunade sits in a corner of the room and draws circles on the floor with her finger. Tsunade sama don't sulk over this matter. You should save some money. Shizun tries to comfort Tsunade. Sob, sob. My premium sake. I just imported it from Land of Honey. I haven't even taken a sip of this sake. I even hid it underground to prevent Izuna from noticing it. Tsunade continues to sulk. Shizun continues to persuade Tsunade. In the playground, Naruto is taking a ride on the swing. Nearby, Suzuki is surrounded by lots of girls who pester him to play with them. I hid my presence with light cloak and silently watch their interaction. One of the civilian kids throws a stone at Naruto. Naruto avoids the stone by somersaulting from the swing. Hey, what's your problem? Why are you throwing a stone at me? Naruto frowns and questions the kid. Give my father back to me? You killed my father nine tails. I won't forgive you. Another civilian kid joins him and throws pebbles and stones at Naruto. Naruto avoids most of them but is still hit by a few stones. Suzuki pushes back the girls and walks up to the civilian kids. Stop. If you dare lay even a finger on Naruto, then I will beat you up. Suzuki threatens them. One of the civilian kids ignores Suzuki and throws a pebble at Naruto. Suzuki gets angry upon seeing this. He balls his small hands into a fist and punches the civilian kid in the gut. The civilian kid faints from this punch. The nearby kids start to attack Suzuki, but he manhandles them. That's Suzuki for you. So, there are still rumors about Naruto. I have to talk to Hiruzen about this matter. Izuna silently walks behind Naruto and heals him. Guess Suzuki will take care of Naruto and it will form a bond of brotherhood in between them. Izuna flickers away from the playground towards Kanaha's exit. Two days passed by. Izuna has successfully infiltrated the Land of Rain, and he is on his way to Omegakur. Izuna stares at the distant Omegakur with his sherry non. Various sky-high metal towers are pointing towards the sky. The whole of Omegakur appears to be more industrialized and developed than the rest of Hidden Village. It is continuously raining inside the village. He activates his Eye of Insight to look at the rain. Small droplets of chakra appear in his vision. So, that's how it is. Rain Tiger at Will Technique The technique that allows Nagato to monitor the entire Hidden Rain Village. By infusing his own chakra in rain, he allows it to fall on the village. If any outsider enters the village, it will warn the pain of the arrival of the intruder. Quite a handy technique to use on the unsuspecting intruders. I don't have to be afraid of pain. I am capable enough to fight him. Izuna slowly walks towards the village and enters the village. The rain droplets fell upon his body and detect his chakra signature. Inside one of the metal pipe tower, a man with short spiky orange hairs with many black piercings through his body opens his eyes. His eyes are purple with many concentric circles covering the entire eyeball. He wore a large black cloak with red clouds. Conan, a very powerful chakra signature just entered the village. I just detected his presence with my rain tiger technique. Locate him and relay his features to me. Many paper butterflies combined to shape into a woman. The newcomer had short, straight blue hair with a bun, amber eyes with lavender eyeshadow, and a labret piercing. Pain, I will relay the feature of intruder immediately. Conan closes her eyes and sends some butterfly-shaped papers in the direction pointed by Pain. She soon spots Aizuna walking along the streets of a Megakur. Aizuna notices the paper butterfly but ignores them. So, they are scouting for my identity. I have to see how high of a threat I am to them. He continues to walk along the streets. Conan opens her eyes and relays the feature of the newcomer to Pain. Pain, it is a problem. The newcomer is Aizuna Uchiha, the silent shiny gummy. He has infiltrated our village. In Madara's list of people to stay from, he comes at the top. We can't fight and win against him. We have to find a way to drive him away from a Megakur. Conan warns Pain. Shinigami or not, he has intruded into the territory of God. He will suffer God's retribution for that. Conan, intercept him, I will activate other paths of Pain shortly and send them to help you. Pain orders Conan. Pain, are you sure about engaging him in a fight? Madara has warned us against it. Conan tries to convince Pain. He isn't aware of my abilities, which gives me a huge advantage in a fight against him. Today, the Shinigami shall know Pain. Pain interrupts Conan and walks away inside the tower. Conan's entire body and clothing turned into multiple paper sheets, which folded into many butterflies and flew towards Izuna's location. Meanwhile, Izuna is inspecting the buildings of a Megakur. They sure like to use lots of metal. Even their houses are made of metal. I can't find a single building made up of wood. This rain will decompose wood easily. I guess that's why they are using stainless metal to construct their houses. But why is everything in the shape of huge metal pipes? What's with this design aesthetic? Izuna walks up to a nearby food stall and picks up the freshly fried takoyaki. Oh Bazin, how much for this takoyaki? He picks up a tray with six golden takoyaki in them. Drool leaks from his mouth as he gulps his saliva. Izuna is in his original appearance but has removed the Kanaha forehead protector to adopt the style of a traveler. That will be a hundred ryo, the old lady replies. Izuna takes out a hundred ryo coin and hands it to the old lady. You aren't from around here, the old lady inquires. Well, I am an orphan who is traveling across the world. During my travels, I will sell my wares, which I bought in another nation. It is my first time in Hidden Rain Village, and I am excited to try its specialties. It sure is peaceful here. Any recommendation Obazin? 
Aizuna warms up to the old lady. The old lady invites him in and gives the freshly fried takoyaki to him. We have been living a hard life. The civil war among the top powers of AIM had affected our livelihood. If you want to try local specialties, then my takoyaki is one of them. Then there is the special day-to-day -day appliances built here in AIM. Our AIM is one of the most industrialized nations. You will find all kinds of machinery here. The old lady explained everything to him. Hanzo-sama has taken good care of a megakur to develop to this extent. Aizuna tests the old lady. The old lady snaps at Aizuna and throws things at him. Get out, get out right now. I don't want to hear that name again. He executed my husband and family. Get out. The old lady throws random things at Aizuna. Aizuna quickly runs out of the shop. Many passersby stare at Aizuna with an unfriendly expression. Aizuna scratches his head and walks into a nearby alley. 81st encounter with pain Aizuna slowly walks through the pipes of the AIM sewage system. He notices some AIM Jounins on his trail, but he ignores them and continues to walk further along the pipes. The AIM Jounins continues to follow Aizuna in the pipes. They soon reach a dead end, but the intruder is nowhere to be seen. Before they could turn around, large rock hands bind them to the ground as Aizuna appears out of nowhere. The AIM Ninja struggles to get free, but he seals their chakra. Searching for someone? Perhaps me. Aizuna slowly walks in front of them and interrogates them. I will ask questions and you will answer them. Now my first question, where is Hanzo? If you dare lie to me, then the consequences won't be to your liking. Aizuna threatens them. You can try anything you want, even our ghosts won't answer your questions. We, we have a god behind us. Go, god is constantly watching over us. He won't allow his subordinates to suffer. One of the aim ninja gulps his saliva. If you want salvation, then submit to our god and follow us. Or else god's retribution will fall upon you. Another aim ninja haughtily reply, I will deal with your god later. But first, you will suffer my retribution. Jinjutsu, Sherinon. Say hello to Milton. Aizuna has an evil grin on his face. No, somebody help. Help me. Save me from this monstrosity. No, let me go. No, not there. No, the aim ninja struggles desperately. Aizuna turns to another ninja and smiles at him. If you won't answer my questions, then it will be your turn next. Trust me, you don't want to know what kind of suffering your friend is facing right now. The aim ninja continues to scream for help. The other ninja gulps his saliva, his back drenches in a cold sweat. I know nothing. Angel Sama ordered us to intercept the intruder. That's, that's all. The aim ninja stutters. I don't want to know about your god or angel. Tell me about Hanzo. Where is Hanzo? Give me the location of Hanzo's residence. Aizuna questions him. I, I know nothing about it. Please spare me. I won't bother you again. I won't even report this to Angel Sama. The aim ninja pleads. Many origami butterflies surround Aizuna. The paper butterflies open up to reveal many paper bombs. Boom. The paper bombs explode before the aim ninja could react. The smoke clears to reveal Aizuna, who is completely fine. Aizuna cracks his neck and looks at the newcomer. The origami papers surround him again and bind his body. The remaining papers turn into the upper body of a woman who held a paper spear in her hand and stab it toward Aizuna. You know, you are underestimating me. A streak of purple lightning flashes and crumbles all the papers. Lightning release, purple lightning. The origami papers float and shape into a woman. Angel Sama? Angel Sama? Save me, Angel Sama. He held me hostage and interrogated me. But Angel Sama, I have revealed nothing to him. The aim ninja pleads to Conan. Get out of the way. You are being a nuisance. I will personally deal with him. Conan replies in a cold tone. The origami papers turn into many shurikens and kunaus and shoot towards Aizuna. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Aizuna spews out a giant fireball without making any hand signs. The fireball burns the paper kunaus and shurikens. Dance of the shikigami, paper chakram. Conan raises her hands and shapes many origami papers into a large paper chakram which spins rapidly. She launches the paper chakram towards Aizuna. The paper chakram turns into multiple chakram midair. Conan manipulates them. Lightning release, rakery blade. Aizuna stretches his right hand and forms a large lightning blade. He slashes the paper chakram into halves and cuts Conan's chakra from them. Conan infuses more chakra and turns it into multiple origami papers. The origami paper shapes into large wings behind her, which she directs towards Aizuna. So, you are the angel. The messenger of God. That's a fancy appearance right there. Impersonating or I would say cosplaying as an angel. Aizuna taunts Conan. Conan ignores Aizuna's taunts and points a finger towards him. Dance of the Shikigami, Paper Rain. The paper wings shoot the paper's projectiles at a very high velocity. Inferno release, blazing destruction. Aizuna spews out a concentrated red fire beam from his mouth, which collides with the paper. The highly concentrated flames incinerate the papers and travel towards Conan. The flames incinerate her paper body into ashes. Paper clone. Aizuna frowns. The ground turns into many papers which engulf Aizuna. Many paper bombs appear amidst the papers and detonate. Boom. The explosion engulfs Aizuna. After a few seconds, the smoke clears out to reveal Aizuna shrouded in a silver chakra skeletal ribs. He is perfectly fine with no damage to his body. Even the skeletal construct is unharmed. That was a pretty nice trick. But playtime is over, I will have to capture you to get my answers. 
A large skeletal hand grabs the paper body of Conan. You are my hostage now. Now answer my questions. Where is Hanzo of the Salamander? What happened to him? Izuna questions Conan. It was during this time when Pain killed Hanzo, but I want to confirm it from her. Answer my questions within the next 10 seconds or else I won't mind turning you into a corpse. Izuna threatened Conan. You are overestimating yourself, silent Shinigami. You are in the territory of God if this is the extent of your power, then forget about getting alive out of here. Conan remarks confidently, with no change in her expression. Then summon your god here. I will also like to taste the true power of your so-called god. The Suzano arm squeezes paper Conan tightly. Shinra Tensei. A powerful repulsive force acts upon Izuna and throws him out of the pipe. The powerful force flung Izuna out of a megakur through many metal buildings and towers. Metal release, adamantine skin. Izuna coats his body in metal chakra and prevents damage from the collision. Conan turns her body into various paper butterflies and avoids harm. At the outskirts of a megakur. Izuna stands up from the rocks and debris. He dusts up his clothes and cracks his knuckles. I am fired off for this fight. It has been a while since I had time to go all out. I hope pain will give me a decent fight. I can feel my blood boiling when thinking of a fight against pain. Is this the side effect of being Madara's descendant? I knew Grandpa Madara was famous for his lust for battle. Maybe I have inherited some of his characters. Izuna stands up and floats out of the crater on an iron pipe. So, you are the leader of Akatsuki, the so-called god. Have you dealt with Hanzo already? Or are you manipulating him and ruling a Megakur from shadows? Izuna questions the newcomer. The newcomer has large orange hairs tied into a ponytail. He had many black rods as piercing all over his body. The newcomer wore a black robe with red clouds pattern. Summoning Jutsu. The newcomer summons a large red and white crab summon. The crab spits out a white corrosive foam from his mouth. The foam surrounds Izuna and corrodes everything in its way. Scorch release, extreme steaming murder. Izuna makes some hand signs and throws out a large yellow orb towards the crab. The yellow orb evaporates the white corrosive foam and collides with the crab summons. Steam rises from the crab's body as the crab gets cooked. The body of the crab shrivels and all the water in its body evaporates. A media roam arises in the surrounding and the crab summons disappears in a puff of smoke. That was a well done crab. Too bad, I don't have any salt, pepper, and sauce to enjoy the dish. Izuna jokes at Pain. Pain looks at Izuna with a blank expression. Shinigami or not, you are still a man. But through infinite pain and suffering, I have transcended humanity. Yes, from a man to God, I have attained Godhood. Now watch the power of a God with your eyes. Pain opens his arms widely. A large summoning seal appears beside him. Summoning Jetsu. Inside an underground hideout. Black Zetsu opens his eyes and walks up to a masked Obito. Obito, an unexpected situation had arisen. The Uchiha boy with the moniker of Silent Shinigami is facing against Pain. The boy infiltrated the Omegakur earlier and now he is engaged in a fight against Pain. He easily defeated the Konan, which forced Pain to show his hands. It is hard to decide a winner between the boy and Pain. We can't allow our chess piece to fall so easily. We have to intercept their fight. We can't allow things to fall apart so easily even before we put our Eye of the Moon plan in motion. Help Pain deal with the nuisance. You don't have to defeat the kid, just separate both of them from each other. Also, summon rest of our members. Obito stands up and disappears into a swirling portal while remarking. The plan won't fall apart. I will handle the situation. Black Zetsu enters the grounds and disappears from the hideout. 81 Shinigami vs God Summoning Jutsu. The animal path pain makes many hand signs and summons a variety of animal summons. A giant drill-beaked bird, a giant multi-headed dog, a giant snake-tailed chameleon, a giant panda, a giant centipede, a giant rhino, and a giant ox. Show him what true pain is. The animal path directs all of his summons at Izuna. That's a very nice suit, you have opened there. Let me pet these animals for you. Izuna makes a large lightning release, vanishing Raisnon and throws it towards the summoned creatures. The giant panda jumps in front of the Raisnon and tanks the hit for other summoned creatures. Puff. The panda disappears in a puff of white smoke. Scree. The giant drill-beaked bird shoots out from the white smoke at a quick speed. Swift release, sonic steps. Izuna disappears from his position leaving a blurry shadow behind. The bird pierces the blurry shadow with the drill-shaped beak. The shadow turns into a large lightning net and traps the bird. The bird struggles inside the net as lightning continue to zap it. Storm release, laser circus. Izuna appears above the giant dog and chops into pieces. The chopped pieces of the dog regenerate into new dogs and multiple dogs line up. Woof, woof. The dogs bark madly and chase Izuna. Bad doggo, bad doggo, let me chain you up. Metal release, Iron Maiden. A large Iron Maiden with multiple chains erupts from the ground. The chains bind up the dogs and pull them inside the Iron Maiden. The spiky interior of Iron Maiden closes up and turns the dogs into a beehive. Boom. Many explosive eggs fell upon Izuna's position. Earth style, mud dome. Izuna blocks the explosive eggs. He makes some hand signs. Ice release, ice prison. Izuna freezes the bird in midair. The bird fell on the ground and shatter into countless ice splinters. Bad bird? You should not kill just bomb your eggs. Bam. The giant ox slams into Izuna, throwing him far away. Izuna stands up and dusts off his clothes. 
The metal coating on his body disappears and Aizuna slowly walks towards the ox. The ox charges again to slam in Aizuna. Aizuna clenches his fist and coats them with metal chakra. His fists turn into steel and Aizuna punches the ox. The horns of the ox snap in half, and it is sent flying by the blow. A forked tongue appears out of nowhere and stabs into Aizuna's body. Shatter. Aizuna's body shatters into various particles, and he appears behind the camouflaged chameleon. I have been waiting for you to attack. Water style, high pressure jet. Aizuna chops down the chameleon summon in half with a high pressure water jet. Poof. The chameleon disappears in a large puff of smoke. I am getting tired of your summons. It is time to end this. Aizuna claps his hand and yells. Radiation release, nuclear devastation. He throws out a small green orb from his hands. The orb travels in the midst of the summons and expands rapidly. Boom. The green orb explodes in a large column of light and engulfs all the summons. Bang. Aizuna suddenly appears in front of Animal Path and punches him in the gut. The pain path zooms past the light pillar and collides with a large boulder and shatters it. It continues to get pushed back by the momentum and breaks multiple towers as it enters inside the aim. Bang. The pain crashes into the ground and creates a large crater. The body of the pain path is badly damaged and there is an enormous gaping hole in its stomach. All the black chakra rod piercings have been ejected out from its body. So, this is the puny power of a self-proclaimed god. Pretty unremarkable, if I would have to say. Your weakness disgust me. Aizuna taunts pain. Come on, send all paths of pain. I am tired of fighting against the animal path. I am god. My words and thoughts become the law of nature. I can defy the very existence of death since I have long ago shed my humanity and transcended godhood. I am a god of peace, and you have disrupted the order and peace. Now get ready for your punishment. Multiple pain paths appear beside the damaged body of the animal path. The Narika path makes some hand signs and slams his hand on the ground. A large head of King of Hell sprouts out from the ground. It has Rinnegan similar to other pain paths and is surrounded by purple flames of hell. The King of Hell opens its mouth wide and tendrils like arms appears its mouth and pull the damaged body of animal path inside it. The King of Hell ingests the body of animal path and channels the restorative powers of Narika path. After a while, the animal path walks out of King of Hell's mouth fully rejuvenated. So, that's the power of fabled Rinnegan. I never expected the leader of Akatsuki to possess such a powerful dojutsu. Aizuna remarks to Pain. So, the Black Zetsu has been monitoring me for a while. I bet he is enjoying my fight against the Pain. I can't kill Pain now, I don't fear any plot change but I want a motive for Shisui, Itaki, Suzuki, and Naruto to grow stronger. Pain shall serve that purpose, but that doesn't mean I can't rough him up. I can't wait to fight against Grandpa Madara and it seems like Nagato has yet to figure out the complete power of Rinnegan. Those who seek power will find only ruination. Men are not gods, no matter what they try, they can never escape the fact that they are human, and are susceptible to the same flaws. But to those who dare to avert the truth with self-conjured lies, they shall ultimately pay the price of forsaking their very identity, for an ephemeral illusion. Aizuna responds to pain. My pain and suffering have gone beyond any known parameter. I have awakened as a god. These eyes granted me the ability to see the truth of the world. This world is corrupted by the selfishness and desires of humanity. My quest for peace is nothing but a way to seek salvation for this doomed world. My desire for power is only a tiny fragment of my desire for peace. The world needs a god to direct it, and now I have been born with that power. Submit to my cause Shinigami and the world shall see true peace. Deva Path Pain answers. Kami-sama, I am not interested in any of your bullcrap. I am here on a mission and you are preventing me from completing my mission. God or not, I will butcher you if you dare interfere with my mission. You need to know pain before you understand the sentiments of God. Deva Path gets into a formation with other paths. I don't care about your God complex. I just want some answers and that's all. You can continue to be the so-called God all you want. Aizuna taunts Pain. Pain ignores Aizuna and attacks him with all of his paths. The Azura Path opens its palms and various heat-seeking missiles lock on Aizuna. The missiles track Aizuna and explode. Aizuna dodges the explosion and makes some hand signs. Inferno style, heat ray. He fires a concentrated beam of fire towards the Azura Path. The Prita Path jumps in front of the Azura Path and absorbs the chakra from the Jetsu. The Azura Path detaches its arm to reveal a cluster of the segmented missile. All the missile locks on Aizuna and follows his trail. The Azura Path bends down and fires a massive metal blade from its back. This double attack blocks all paths of the escape of Aizuna. Aizuna channels chakra in his hands, and his hand gets coated in dark chakra. The hand turns into an enormous claw composed of darkness. Darkness style, shadow claw. The claw grabs hold of the large metal blade and block the explosion of missiles. They are avoiding direct eye contact with me. Are they afraid of my Sharinan Genjutsu? The biggest weakness of pain was Genjutsu. If you think you can avoid my Genjutsu by avoiding eye contact, then you are sorely mistaken. Aizuna claps his hands and makes some hand signs. Sound release, death song. Aizuna cast a sound-based Genjutsu on pain. Many sound waves ripple through the air and enter the ears of pain. The pain trembles and his chakra gets disrupted. Impossible, Genjutsu. How can this be? I made sure to avoid contact with your Sharinan. The pain is paralyzed and looks at Aizuna with disbelief. Aizuna vanishes and appears before the Azura path. He smashes the Azura path to rubbles. 
I will take this for research. These things are a good transmitter of chakra. Izuna pulls out the black chakra rod and stores it inside a scroll. Time to tone down his god complex. Izuna breaks apart all the remaining paths except for Deva path. 82 Itake in danger oi, oi, Itake, you better not think that you saved my ass there. I could have taken care of myself out there. Tenma Izumo, one of Itake's teammate bickers in front of Itake. The thought hasn't crossed my mind. Itake nonchalantly replies to Tenma. Even if you didn't end up helping me, bonk. Tenma is interrupted by a punch from Itake's other teammate, Shinko Inari. Tenma clutches his head and questions Shinko. Ah, that hurts, what are you doing? Why are you still saying stuff like that? He's your friend. Of course, he is going to help you. Shinko reprimands Tenma. Ha, huh? me, his friend. Are you daydreaming? Tenma points at himself and Itake. I was just fulfilling my mission. Itake calmly replied to Shinko. Bam, bam. Shinko punches both Itake and Tenma. Both of you stop bickering like this. We have completed our escort mission of Land of Fire's Daimyo. Yuki Sensei has to move ahead of us due to the mission. Shinko presses her hands against her non existent chest. You too, Itaki. Stop being so difficult to Tenma. Shinko reprimand Itaki. All right, isn't there something you want to say to Itaki? Shinko folds her arms and stares at Tenma. Tenma gulps a mouthful of saliva and avoids Shinko's gaze. He points a finger towards Itaki and speaks to him. I swear I'll make up to you for this. Shinko elbows Tenma in the gut. Why can't you just say, thank you? Tenma gets up and they continue to travel towards Kanaha. After a while, a swirling portal opens up in front of them. Obito walks out of the portal and looks at Itaki. Found you. Since you are the only one out of the protection of Leaf Village, I have to go with you. I am sure if I take you as a hostage, it will force him to stop his action. The masked Obito attacks team 2. Enemy, get information. Itaki warns his teammates. He immediately makes some hand signs. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Itaki launches a giant fireball at the masked man. The giant fireball phases through the masked man. How, how is this possible? Itaki's eyes widen. My fireball phased through his body. How? He quickly makes more hand signs and launches many shurikens towards the masked man. Shuriken shadow clone jutsu. Itaki takes out another shuriken and throws it towards the rest of shurikens. The shurikens change their trajectory and bombard the masked man at tricky angles. Looks like he is aiming for me. I have to buy some time for Tenma and Shinko to escape. The masked man avoids the shuriken and continues to move towards Itaki. Wind release, pressure breakthrough. Itaki fires a high pressure compressed air towards the masked man. The compressed air phases through the masked man. Itaki had a serious expression. He forks out a scroll from his pocket and bit his thumb. Itaki wipes away the blood on the scroll and a seal appears on the scroll. I hope Nyizen's jutsu work on him. Itaki points the scroll towards the masked man. Swish. A very fast black lightning arrow escapes from the scroll and penetrates the hand of the masked man. The black lightning arrow zaps the masked man and paralyzes him. Many Funjutsu seals binds him in one place. This is. The masked man's eyes widen, and he looks at Itaki with disbelief. So, this is the gift given to you by him. Not bad, if I have to say. But it won't be able to hold me for long. The masked man smirks. Obito activates the Hashirama cell inside his body and resists the paralysis caused by the black lightning arrow. Tenma, Shinko, we have to run as far as possible. We are no match for him, and I don't think even Sensei can do anything against him. We have to escape, my jutsu can only hold him for a few more moments. Itaki warns his teammates. But, ask your questions later. For now, just run for your life. Itaki interrupts Tenma and runs towards the village. Tenma and Shinko follows Itaki. Itaki, who is he? He seems to be after you for some reason. Shinko questions Itaki while running. I don't know who he is, but he seems to be an enemy of Big Brother Izuna, and he wants to kidnap me to force Izuna and Iizen to do something for him. Itaki deducts. They run for five minutes and couldn't spot any trace of the masked man. Tenma and Shinko heaves a sigh of relief and Tenma speaks. That was a close call. We have escaped from him, I don't think he can trail us anymore. Oh, do you honestly think you have shaken me off? The masked man walks out of a swirling portal. Tenma clenches a kunao in his right hand and shouts to Itaki. Itaki, my time to repay you have come. Tenma dashes towards the masked man. No, stop Tenma. You are no match for him. Itaki shouts to Tenma. Slash. The masked man slashes Tenma along his chest. A large fountain of blood spill from Tenma's chest and he desperately tries to attack the masked man. Slash. The masked man slashes again and Tenma's right hand separates from his body. Tenma falls on the ground and sorrowfully looks at Itaki. I am sorry, Itaki. I wasn't able to fulfill my promise. Tenma closes his eyes and silently lies on the ground. No. Tenma? No. Itaki shouts in desperation. Chakra gathers in his eyes, and Itaki awakens his Sherinon. Tutum Sherinon appears in each of his eyes. Now come with me like an obedient child. The masked man approaches Itaki and tries to grab him. Crack. One of the bandages on Itaki's arms breaks and a large Funjutsu seal appears on the ground. A large trick or red barrier encloses Itaki and pushes back the masked man. Your big brother is quite doting of his younger brother. He even places a three-ying barrier formation to protect you in case of danger. Too bad it won't be able to last long against me. 
The masked man pulls out a large black rod from his sleeves. He stabs the black rod in the barrier. The black rod sucks out the chakra from the barrier. Crack. Cracks start to appear on the barrier and the masked man gets ready to attack Itake. At a Megakur, Izuna faces against pain. Nagato has summoned all six paths of pain to confront Izuna. Izuna destroyed all of them except for the Deva path. I will show you the true power of God. The Deva path claps his hands and infuses large amounts of chakra in his palms. Crack. One of the rings in Izuna's finger snaps in half. Izuna looks at the ring and a frown appears on his face. Itaki is in danger. He is facing a life and death situation. The safety of Itaki comes first. Looks like I have to postpone my fight against Deva Path. Goodbye, Kamisama. I have some urgent matters to handle. I will see you later. Izuna looks at the Deva Path and disappears in a flash. Izuna's figure shatters into countless fragments and disappears from the scene. He left. Konan flies from a nearby boulder. He used the space-time ninjutsu of the fourth Hokage. I don't know what his intentions were, but thankfully he left us alone. I still don't have enough control over the movements of six paths. If we had continued, then I would have lost to him. He will be a great hindrance to us in the future. I would have to ask Madara to deal with him. I am sure only Madara can deal with him. The Deva Path remarks at Izuna's prowess. Together with Konan, he returns to a Megakur. Obito stabs another black rod in the three yang formation. It's almost time for it to break. I have to take him as a hostage and force the Shinigami to withdraw, shatter. The three yang formation shatters and the masked man continues forward to stab the black rod towards Itaki. Clank. Izuna teleports in front of Itaki and blocks the strike. I hope I have made it on time. Izuna looks towards a stunned Itaki and smiles at him. Let me deal with the enemy first and I will talk with you later. Izuna looks at the masked man. It's you again. You want to kill Itaki because you can't deal with me. Huh? I have to make sure you return with a few limbs less for your courage to pull such a stunt against me. Chirp. Chi. Izuna coats his blade in lightning chakra. The blade produces sounds similar to the chirping of a thousand birds. No, not this technique. I don't want to see it again. Obito clutches his head as memories of Rin's death flashed through his mind. Captain. Captain. A subtle voice breaks their momentum. Captain? What are you doing here? You were out on a mission right. How come you are here? Izuna spots Kakashi dashing toward him from a distance. Kakashi. I have to go. I can't face him. Obito clutches his head and uses Kamui to teleport away. Izuna allows Obito to escape. Kakashi? What are you doing here? Izuna questions Kakashi. That's my question, Captain Izuna, Kakashi complains. I am you Captain right? So answer me first. Izuna ignores Kakashi's question. It is like this. Kakashi explains the details of his mission. 83 a day off part 1 Captain. Hokage-sama secretly tasked me to protect the fire daimyo. What about you? I thought you were out on another mission. Kakashi question Izuna. I had another mission, but the seal I placed on Itaki activated, so I had to teleport to him to protect him. Izuna replied to Itaki. Wa, awa. Their attention is drawn by the wailing of Shinko. Shinko hugged Tenma's body and wailed loudly. Izuna immediately uses medical ninjutsu on Tenma to heal him. Tenma's wounds close, but his heartbeat has stopped. Izuna coats his hand in lightning chakra and defibrillate Tenma. The lightning chakra jerks Tenma's body, but he stays still. Izuna defibrillate him again, Tenma's body jerks again. After defibrillating for a while, a faint heartbeat starts in Tenma's body. Tenma slowly opens his eyes and coughs up blood. He looks around and spots others. Shinko supports him. He slowly stands up and feels the absence of his right hand. It is too late to heal your arm. The nerves near your arm stump have died already. I have already healed your injuries. Visit Kanaha's hospital for further checkup. Izuna remind Tenma. Also, your career as a shinobi is over with that arm. No, my clan? My father? How will I secure them if I can't continue as a ninja? Tenma sobs. Face the reality of the situation. It is thanks to the expertise of Captain, you could preserve your life, or else you would have died here. I am sure you will find a solution to your problem. For now, cherish your new life and find a new meaning to it. Kakashi advises Tenma. Life? Some people live for others. Some people live for their clan. What am I living for? Itaka contemplates. The figure of Suzuki's smile flashes in Itaka's mind. I am not sure, but I want to protect that smile of Suzuki. Itaka clenches his fist in a new resolve. All right, everyone, grab hold of me. I will teleport all of you to Kanaha. Izuna claps his hand to get their attention. Swoosh. Swoosh. All of them teleport to the gates of Kanaha. Shinko and Itaka carry Tenma to the hospital. Kakashi and Izuna walk towards Hokage's office. Kakashi reports to Hiruzen and walks out of the office. Izuna stay behind to report to Hiruzen. Hum, you can report now. Hokage-sama? I successfully infiltrated a Megakur to gather the intel. There is a civil war ongoing in AIM. Hanzo of the Salamander and the leader of Akatsuki Pain are engaged in a power struggle. Pain the leader of Akatsuki possessed the fabled Rinnegan Dojutsu. He is very powerful and we should avoid such a foe. He holds enough power to destroy the Leaf Village in seconds. I fought with him, but I have to teleport out from a Megakur amid our fight. I could not meet or contact Hanzo. So, Hanzo's status is unknown. Hanzo is known for his cautious nature, so I am not sure of his status. 
But if I have to guess then, Pain will be able to deal with Hanzo, Aizuna reports to Hiruzen. What? The leader of Akatsuki possesses the Rinnegan. That is grave news for five great nation. If he possesses those eyes, then he holds enough power to rule over the world. That's a serious matter. We must not provoke aim unnecessarily for a while. Hiruzen contemplates. Hokage Sama, Akatsuki is recruiting many S rank criminals or missing nins. I didn't spot Orikimura with them, but I am sure he will join them in the future. Aizuna takes out a scroll from his pocket and presents it to Hiruzen. This is the intel on abilities of the leader of Akatsuki, Pain. I have noted down all of his powers and capabilities. Hokage Sama, I suggest not to send any more spies in a Megakur. Pain considers himself a god, and he possesses such power. His motto is world peace, but I doubt it to be true. I am unsure of their aim, but I would suggest monitoring Akatsuki. Aizuna warns Hiruzen. Very well, I will keep that in mind. I approve your request for retirement. Before you retire from Ambu, I would like to know the name of a suitable candidate for the captain's position of Team Ro. You know about your team much better than me, so I leave this choice to you. Then I will recommend Vice Captain Kakashi Heitake for this position. He has enough experience and strength to lead the Team Ro. Hokage Sama, I will leave the village for a while. I want to wander around the world and satiate my curiosity. Aizuna presents his opinion. It will truly be unfortunate for Umbu to lose a member like you. Very well, I will accept your request. I will send you on a long-term mission outside Kanaha. Hiruzen takes out a scroll from his drawer and writes something on it. He gives the scroll to Aizuna and continues. From onwards, Aizuna Uchiha, I relieve you from your duties as Umbu captain. I will assign you a long-term rank mission to gather information about Akatsuki. You can use any means available to you. You should contact Jireya, his information network is widespread across many nations. Dismiss. Yes, Hokage-sama. Aizuna stands up and disappears from the spot. His figure shatters in countless fragments of light. That's a wonderful trick. Hiruzen stares at the fragments with wide eyes. It's time for some peeking, Ohun. I mean some research. Hiruzen takes out his crystal ball from the drawer and starts his research. There is something which I need to take care of before I leave the village. I will take care of them in these few days. Aizuna walks up to Senja compounds while lost in his thoughts. He enters inside the compound. Shizun walks out of the house and greets him. It has been a while, Aizunakan. Tsunade Sama is in Leaf Hospital. If you want to meet with her, then you have to visit her office. Yes, it has been a while. I am here to meet with Naruto. I want to spend some time together with him. Where is he? Nyaizen? Nyaizen? I am here, Nyaizen. Databia. Naruto runs out of the house. Naruto wore a white t-shirt with an Uzumaki symbol on his back. His yellow hairs are as messy as ever. Aizuna ruffles his hair. Naruto, come big brother will take you on an outing. Where do you want to go? Ramen? I want to eat ramen, big brother Aizuna. Take me to Ichiraku ramen. I want to eat their ramen. Naruto jumps in excitement. Okay, okay, calm down. We will go together with Suzuki. Let us fetch him. No, I don't want to go with him. Databia. Naruto puffs his cheeks. Come on, Naruto. He is like your big brother. Why you don't want to go with him? But, but Nyaizen. He gets all the attention, and others ignore me and even avoid me. That's not cool at all. Also, Suzuki is very strong. I also want to grow strong. Big brother, teach me some cool jutsu. I also want to become a very cool ninja and throw some powerful jutsu at my enemies. Naruto complains. Okay, okay, I will teach you some jutsu later. For now, let us eat some ramen. Yay, ramen. Let us eat ramen. I will eat lots of ramens. I love ramen. Databia. Naruto cheers upon the mention of ramen. Both of us walk towards Uchiha compounds. We pick up Suzuki from his house and continue to roam around the market. I buy lots of things for Naruto and Suzuki. Naruto, let us buy new clothes for you. After buying clothes we will eat some ramen. Aizuna drags a drooling Naruto towards a cloth shop. Suzuki, you also pick something you like. I will buy it for you. Suzuki cheers up and looks towards the weapon shop with sparkling eyes. I select various clothes for Naruto. He tries them all but picks up orange colored clothes. He still likes orange color. Some things will never change. Nyaizen. Nyaizen. Suzuki tugs my clothes and points towards the weapon shop. I want to buy a blade, Nyaizen. Both you and Shisui Nyaizen looks way too cool with a tanto. I also want to swing around a tanto and fight my enemies. Nyaizen, can you buy me one, please? Suzuki makes puppy eyes at Aizuna. Okay, okay, I will buy the tanto. You can ask Shisui to train you in Kenjutsu. Once you master all of his moves, I will train you further. Yay, you are the best Nyaizen. Suzuki jumps happily. Inside the leaf hospital. Achu, Itaka sneezes and looks around. Somehow, I feel like someone is stealing Suzuki away from me. I won't allow such a thing. I will buy a gift for Suzuki later. Side story hashtag Hayaga Affair Part 1 A slash N, I forgot to write about this part. To make up for that, I will write it as a side story. So, enjoy and remind me if I forget something. Naruto world is too huge. Enjoy the double release. Whenever the plot is chilling like now, I will add side stories as bonus to spice things up. Chirp, chirp. A bird flies across the sky, casting a shadow above Aizuna's head. Yawn. Aizuna stands up and stretches his arms. 
Oi, Shisui, Itaka get up. Enough rest already, let's continue with the training. Aizuna wakes up an exhausted Shisui and Itaki relaxing beside him. Itaki and Shisui groggily open their eyes and complain. Let us rest a little more. We have trained non-stop for almost seven hours already. You only allowed us an hour break. Don't be lazy bums and get your asses on the training field or I will double your training from tomorrow. Aizuna rebukes them. Hi, hi, we understand. Itaki and Shisui lazily stand up and stretch their muscles. Aizuna speechlessly looks at their reaction. Am I too soft on them? He ponders. Itaki and Shisui look at Aizuna's expression. It is because you always double our training. We don't even have the count of the number of instances. Ah, uh, looks like I have been too strict with their training. I will give them a break for today. Shisui and Itaki eagerly wait for his response. Is that so? Then, I guess it can't be helped. Just deal with it. You will get used to it someday. Aizuna grins and replies to them. Nu. Shisui and Itaki depressingly drop down their head. Big brother Aizuna is a slave driver. Both of them look at the smiling face of Aizuna. No, he is a devil. Both of them mutter silently. Just kidding? I will give you a break for a day or two. Aizuna looks at their gloomy expression. Phew. Shisui and Itaka sigh in relief. Oh, did I hear something offending earlier? Or is it my ears that were ringing because of the breeze? Aizuna has a wicked smile on his face as he looks at Shisui and Itaki. No, no. Aizuna nai Aizen. It must be the air. We spoke nothing earlier. Shisui and Itaka sweat buckets. We don't want to increase our training because of our stupid remark. They silently pray in their heart. Okay, it's fine. Both of you can have a break. How about a hot spring bath? We can even bring Naruto and Suzuki too. Aizuna suggests to them. Yes, yes, it is a nice idea. We will meet you later in the evening. Shisui hurriedly remarks and escapes with Itaki. Looks like I have to give them break more often. I don't want to hamper their growth and potential, especially Itaki. Aizuna continues to swing his blade. There are various gravity seals on the blade and it almost weighs around 200 kilograms. I have progressed quite a lot in eight gates. For now, six gates are my limit. I can't push for the seventh gate. There are too many things to learn. Quit, 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 key, key. Aizuna raises his head and spots an eagle flying through the skies. That's a summon from Hokage. Looks like this is the end of my training session. Aizuna puts back the blade in his bracer and wipes his sweat and uses a simple water jutsu to clean his body. He flickers towards Hokage office. Inside Hokage office, Hiruzen is looking at a pile of documents in front of him. Sigh. This paperwork. Guess I will not get my research time today. Knock, knock. Someone knocks on the door. Come in. Aizuna enters the office and bows in front of Hiruzen and waits for his orders. Hiruzen places the paperwork aside and takes out a scroll from the pile. Captain Aizuna Uchiha of Umbu Team Row, I have an Srank mission for you. Yes, Hokage-sama. You are aware of the recent tension between Kumagakur and Kanahagakur. In the previous war, our Kanaha won the war against Kumo and Kumo lost their rakage. Naturally, they weren't satisfied with the result of the war. Strife and conflicts are common at the border, but Kumo has been aggressively recently and may recklessly start another war. Hiruzen pauses and tosses the scroll towards Aizuna. Aizuna takes the scroll and schemes through its contents. To avoid the conflict, the Elder Council has decided to sign a peace treaty with Kumagakur. So, the entourage of Kumagakur will arrive in a few days. Hiruzen turns towards Aizuna and continues. Aizuna Uchiha, I want you to monitor their activities and prevent any suspicious activity. I don't want to give Kumo a reason to start another war and disrupt the peace. Yes, Hokage-sama. I will deploy my team around the borders and the village and monitor them. Good. Hiruzen nods his head and dismisses Aizuna. Aizuna walks towards the door. Wait a sec. Hiruzen stops Aizuna. In a few more days, the princess of Hayaga clan will turn three, which coincides with the arrival of the Kumo entourage. I want you to personally monitor the security of Hayaga princess if in any case, the Kumo entourage joins the celebration. Yes, Hokage-sama. I will keep that in mind. Aizuna nods to Hiruzen and flickers out from the office. I hope no major incident will happen this time. Kanaha is at its weakest right now. If Kumo ignites the spark of war, then Kanaha will suffer and that fence-sitter may backstab us. Ha, huh, being a Hokage is a tiring task. Looks like my age has caught up to me. I am not that energetic anymore. Hiruzen depressingly looks at the huge pile of paperwork. Outside Hokage office, Aizuna is walking towards Uchiha compounds while lost in his thoughts. So, it's time for that event. Almost three years passed in the blink of an eye. I have no bad blood with Hayagas. I will help them out this time and maybe they will accept Naruto more openly in the future. Aizuna nai Aizen. Aizuna nai Aizen. A childish voice breaks Aizuna's train of thoughts. Aizuna turns in the source's direction. Suzuki runs towards him and hugs his legs. Aizuna nai Aizen. Let's go to the hot spring. You promise me right. You haven't forgotten about it, right? Suzuki stares at Aizuna with cute puppy eyes. Ah, how can I forget about my promise to you? Come, let's go to hot springs. Aizuna lifts Suzuki and places him on his shoulders. Suzuki piggyback rides Aizuna as they walk towards the hot springs. Suzuki, let's pick up Naruto. We will go together. Okay. Aizuna walks towards Senju compounds and picks up Naruto. Aizuna and I Aizen. I also want piggyback ride. 
It's not fair for Olisa's okay to get the piggyback ride. Naruto hugs Aizuna's right leg. Okay, okay, calm down, Naruto. I will give a piggyback ride to you too. Aizuna places Suzuki on his left shoulder and picks up Naruto and places him on his right shoulder. Yay. Naruto claps his little hands and cheers. They continue to walk among the streets of Kanaha. That's the demon fox brat. Who is carrying him? One of the civilian murmurs to another civilian as they spot Naruto. SHH, that's an Uchiha. Can't you see the Uchiha clan symbol on his back? Uchiha or not, he is carrying that demon fox. That demon fox killed my father, I can't stand his sight. Another person whispers to them. Aizuna notices them and hears their conversation. That bastard Danzo is spreading rumors about Naruto or how else these civilians will come to know the top secret information of village. TCH. I won't allow them to slander Naruto. Aizuna looks towards the civilians. Genjutsu, Sherinan. He cast a small genjutsu on them. The three civilians mindlessly walk towards a sewer opening and dives in it. Plop, plop, plop. The genjutsu dispels, and they look around. Arg. This smell. Where am I? The civilians look around. This is, this is, sewer of Kanaha. How did I come here? Why can't I recall anything? Have I drunk too much alcohol? All three civilians questions themselves. Aizuna reaches the hot springs together with Naruto and Suzuki. He spots Shisui and Itake at the entrance and greets them. All of them enter the hot spring to enjoy a warm bath. 84 a day off part 2 slurp. Slurp. Aizuna, Suzuki, and Naruto are slurping their ramen. So, good. Ichiraku ramen is the best out there. Databia. Naruto praises the ramen. Not bad. I like this ramen. Suzuki compliments the ramen. Yes, it is very good, and Tuchisan takes care of every fine detail when preparing the ramen. The correct amount of broth, the flavor, the nutrition. He has got you covered in all aspects. Aizuna remarks while slurping his ramen. Hun, hun. Tuka nods in satisfaction. His nine-year-old daughter walks out of the house. Oh, Ayam my daughter. Sit near the counter. I will teach you how to make ramen later. Ayam sits near the counter and watches us. Tuchisan, she is your daughter. I question Tuka despite knowing the fact. Yes, she is my little daughter. Her mother passed away shortly after her birth. Tuki reminisces his past and sighs in grief. Tuchisan, why don't you enroll Ayam in Ninja Academy? I question him. I am curious to know the reason why Ayam never entered the academy. Sigh, she is not cut to be a ninja. My wife's last wish was to ensure a secure future for our daughter. Ayam is just like her mother. She is kind-hearted, quiet, and cheerful. I want her to stay that way and besides, after my retirement, she will take care of my ramen shop. Tuki replies. So, that's how it is. I nod to him and continue eating my ramen. Guess everyone wants to live a peaceful life. Seconds, give me a second bowl. Databia. Naruto raises the empty bowl. Eat slowly Naruto, you can eat all you want. But eat slowly. Aizuna reprimands Naruto. But it is so delicious. I can't stop eating, Databia. Naruto continues to inhale his ramen. This boy. Aizuna shakes his head. Do you know your big brother Aizuna is the first person to eat this heavenly ramen? Aizuna points out to Naruto. Wow, really? That's so cool, Aizuna and Aizen. Tell me more about it. Naruto's interest peaks. He slows down his eating and curiously looks at Aizuna to listen to his story. It was around six years ago when Ichiraku Ramen celebrated its grand opening ceremony. I was the first customer in the shop. I lined up early in the morning to eat the ramen before anyone else. It was also during this moment that Minata-san, your fath. Aizuna pauses for a while before he continues. The fourth Hokage invited me on a mission. Wow, big brother, you went on a mission with fourth Hokage. But what is a Hokage? It sounds so cool. Databia. Naruto looks at Aizuna with sparkling eyes. The Hokage is the strongest and the most respected ninja of the village. All loves him and everyone respects him and follows his orders. Aizuna explains to Naruto. Wow, that sounds so cool. I will also become a hot shit. Whatever it is. Then everyone in the village will respect me and won't shun me away. Naruto raises his fist in the air. Okay, okay, Hokage-sama. Now eat your ramen before it gets cold. If you want to become a Hokage, then you will have to train hard to get stronger than everyone else. I will train you in the future. For now, eat your ramen. Yay? Aizuna and Aizen will teach me jutsu. Databia. Naruto eats his ramen. I feel a sharp stare at my back. I turn around and notice Suzuki staring at me. He pouts and questions. Aizen and Aizen, you will teach jutsu to this dumb Naruto, but you won't teach me anything. I also want to learn jutsu. Suzuki complains. Suzuki, I already taught you fireball jutsu. Have you mastered it yet? I will teach you your next jutsu only after you have mastered the previous one. I have already mastered fireball jutsu. I impressed father by my jutsu. Now teach me more jutsu. Suzuki demands. Okay, okay, I will teach you later. You can ask Shisui to teach you more jutsu. He will teach you more. Once you have mastered all of his jutsus, I will train you further. Yay, you are the best Aizen and Aizen. Suzuki cheers up. Achoo. Itaka sneezes while returning home. Why I have a feeling that my cute little brother is getting away from me. I must buy a gift for him. The other day Suzuki asked me to buy him a tanto. I will buy a small blade for him as a gift. Itaka flickers towards the weapon shop. Later in the evening, 
Aizuna drops Suzuki at his house and visits Senja compounds with Naruto. Tsunade greets him at doorsteps. It has been a while kid, you finally got some time to visit me. I am home, Granny Tsunade, Naruto shouts to Tsunade. Tsunade flicks Naruto's forehead in response. Who are you calling Granny, you brat? I am still too young to be a Granny. Naruto rubs his forehead and runs inside the house. Kid, we need to talk. Let's visit the newly opened Yakiniku Q restaurant. I heard that their salted beef tongue with Welsh onion is quite popular among the villagers. I wanted to try some with sake. Tsunade drags Aizuna without asking for his consent. Aizuna could only helplessly get dragged by Tsunade. They enter Yakiniku Q and grab a table. Yakiniku Q is a Korean, Jayakaku style Yakiniku restaurant. Soon, we placed our order, and they brought the meat to us. I cooked the meat on the charcoal brazier placed at the center of the table. The aromatic smell of cooked meat caused me to drool. I applied some sauce on the meat and grilled it for a while. I cooked the meat to perfection. I picked up my chopsticks to grab the meat. Swish. Sunaid grabbed the meat before me and put it in her mouth. Munch, munch. Delicious. This is too delicious. Your cooking skills are quite good, kid. Sunaid continued to eat. Humph. I angrily harumphed at her. If you like meat this much, then cook your own. Aizuna place another piece of meat on the grill. Sunaid chugs down one cup of sake after another. Ha. She gulped down another cup of sake and looked at Aizuna, who is silently munching on a piece of meat. Say it, kid. Earlier you were searching for me. Shizun told me about it. What do you want to say to me? Aizuna placed down his chopstick and thought of pranking Tsunade. He wants payback for the earlier piece of meat. Aizuna grabs Tsunade's hand and looks in her eyes with a serious expression. Tsunade is startled by this sudden move and turns red from embarrassment. What? What are you doing? She stutters. tsunade -san? It has been a while since we have known each other. The time we spent together has made me think differently about you. I have called you today to express my feelings for you. Tsunade gulps down her saliva and embarrassedly looks at Aizuna while fidgeting. No, this is not possible. Our relationship can't exist, you, you are a lot younger than me and I, I had already given my heart to someone else. But, but, thank you, tsunade -san, for taking care of Naruto. He is like a younger brother to me and I am grateful to you for looking after him. Huh? tsunade -san, what were you saying again? Aizuna smirks at Tsunade. I heard something about love. tsunade -san, do you love me? But aren't you too old for me? Tsunade's expression turns ugly. I have been played by this kid. A tick mark appears on her forehead and she punches Aizuna. Aizuna takes the punch like a man and gets blasted out from restaurant much further than Team Rocket. Damn, this kid. He played me again. Now, I have to pay the bill for the window, roof, and there is also the bill. Tsunade pulls out her purse and opens it. Buzz. A fly buzzes out from the purse. Tsunade takes out a note from the purse and places it on the table. Damn, I don't have money anymore. I have spent all of it on booze and gambling. Why there is so much less money for me? I have to borrow some from Sensei. He is Hokage and would have plenty of money to spare. Here, keep this money as the expense for the roof, window, and the bill. Keep the change. The waiter picks up the old tattered note and looks at Tsunade. I hate to break it you, but you need to pay more. This amount won't cut it out. Your dinner was way more expensive. The meat was of premium quality and we used various expensive ingredients to prepare the sauce. Damn, you Aizuna. Tsunade curse again. Here, send this bill to Kanaha's Leaf Hospital. They will take care of it. Tsunade hurriedly runs out of the restaurant. Huh? Can't afford the expensive food and boast around like they freaking own everything. The server angrily curses at Tsunade. Achoo. Aizuna sneezes and looks towards Yakiniku Q. He spots an angry Tsunade stomping out of the restaurant. Hello, tsunade -san. How was the food? Did you enjoy it? He smirks at Tsunade. You kid. Tsunade tries to punch him again, but this time he dodges her attacks. Fine, I give up. You are so mean, Aizunakan. You won't get a girlfriend like this. Tsunade complains and puffs her cheeks. Aizuna pokes her cheeks and apologizes. I am sorry, tsunade -san. As an apology, here take these million ryo. That's all that I have at the moment. Swish. Before Aizuna could finish his statement, Tsunade grabs the bundle of money and starts to count it. Aizuna speechlessly looks at Tsunade. Tsunade stows the money in her purse and stares back at Aizuna. Apology accepted. Now tell me the real reason why you were looking for me. Aizuna stares at her for a while before he continues. 85 Loose Ends Part 1 tsunade -san. I will be leaving the village for a while. I have been assigned a top secret mission by Hokage-sama. So, I won't be present in the village for a while. Aizuna tells Half-Truth and Half-Fly to her. It would be too much of a hassle to explain to her. I hope she understands. Tsunade sobers up and looks at Aizuna with a pensive gaze. Are you serious, kid? You are going on a long-term mission, that too out of the village. Tsunade scrunches her brow. Then what about me? I wanted to wander the world in search of new medicinal knowledge, and now you are leaving before me. Who will take care of Naruto during this time? Tsunade questions him. tsunade -san? It won't take me too long. I will move out of the village only for one or two years, after which I will return. You can manage Naruto during this time. Tsunade ponders for a while before she nods. Very well, then you should hurry and complete whatever you are trying to do. I will only wait for two years. Thank you, tsunade -san. Aizuna returns to his house. 
During dinner time, he informs Akira and Aiko, Mom, Dad, I will be away from home for a year or two, I have an urgent long-term mission to complete. Son, why don't you reject this mission? I don't want to separate from you for this long. Aiko hugs Aizuna. Last time, you went for almost two months. I don't want to spend another year or two in your absence. Aiko hugs him tightly and sighs in melancholy. Mom, I can return whenever I want. I have mastered the fourth Hokage Jutsu. I can just teleport back when my mission is completed. It is just a year or two. They will pass soon. What? You will stay away on a mission for two years. That's too long. I won't accept it. Just refuse to Hokage Sama. I won't hear any of your thoughts on this matter. Aiko speaks stubbornly. But mom. No, buts. Aiko, it must be an important mission if it is issued directly by Hokage Sama. Our Aizuna is strong enough to overcome any kind of difficulty. It is just a matter of two years. He even fought in the third ninja war and earned a name for himself. Akira tries to reason with Aiko. Fine, but you must visit us regularly. If you promise me this, then I will allow it. Aiko folds her hands and looks at Aizuna. Okay, I promise. I will visit you regularly. Besides, I also want a cute little sister or brother during this time. Aizuna jokes. You brat? It seems like you have learned a lot of things. Aiko pulls Aizuna's ears. Ah, ah. Aizuna whines in pain. After a minute, Aiko releases him, and he returns to his room to prepare for his departure. Aiko, about what Aizuna said. He is quite lonely by himself, why don't we? Ah, ah. Aiko stomps on Akira's leg. Try to give birth once and you will understand my pain. So, is it a no? Akira depressingly looks at Aiko. We, we can consider it. Don't get me wrong, it is for Aizuna's sake. Aiko blushes in embarrassment. Akira gulps his saliva, and a wide grin appears on his face. Aiko had no hope to become a mother again. But Tsunade Senju, one of the legendary Sunin and the greatest medical ninja found a cure for her. Tsunade researched this matter after Aizuna's request and after four years of research, Tsunade figured out the method of surrogacy. It stunned Aizuna when he heard that Tsunade figured out a way to use in vitro fertilization and deliver birth through assisted gestational surrogate. She is a one-of-kind medical genius. I wonder what wonders she could have created in my previous world. These were Aizuna's thoughts when Tsunade explained the feasible solution for Aiko's condition. Unfortunately, her womb is permanently damaged and I don't have a solution for it. Later at night, Aizuna walks out of his house. He wants to pay a last visit to Umbu headquarters and meet with his team and say goodbye. He exits the village and enters the forest. The Umbu headquarters are located on the outskirts of village. Aizuna enters the headquarters, and many Umbus identifies him and greets him. After walking for a while, he enters the room assigned to Team Ro and meets with his team. Hello there, how are all of you doing? Aizuna waves his hand at them. Captain, where is your Umbu outfit? Ujo questions him. She recently joined the Umbu on the recommendation of Hokage for her special ability. Ujo can seal living as well as non-living things inside a scroll. She is also a sensor-type ninja. So, at the age of 11, she joined Umbu. You have quite sharp eyes, Ujo. Yes, I am not in my Umbu outfit because I have resigned from Umbu. I am a normal Jounin now. Kakashi Heiteke will be your new captain. Aizuna informs them. What? You are leaving the Umbu captain, and... I... I am promoted to captain. Kakashi asks in surprise. Kakashi, you are a capable Umbu with many Srank missions and important tasks completion. With these many achievements under your belt, it won't be long before you officially become a captain. My resignation just hastened the progress. Aizuna explains to them. But still... Kakashi murmurs. Congratulations, Vice Captain. No, you are captain now. The team members congratulate Kakashi. Thank you, I guess. Kakashi accepts their congratulations. Captain, what are your plans for the future? Will you babysit new genins or will casually take some missions? One of the team member questions. No, I don't have any plan for babysitting anyone. Hokage Sama has assigned a special mission to me, and I will depart for it. It is a long term mission, so don't expect to see me soon. Aizuna chats with them. Now let us celebrate Kakashi's promotion. Aizuna cheers them. All of us celebrate Kakashi's promotion and cheers him up. You will be a fine captain, Kakashi. I silently whisper to him and get out of the Umbu headquarters. It's time to move out of the village and explore this vast shinobi world. Aizuna walks out of the Umbu headquarters and enters the forest. I would like to wish farewell to everyone but seems like I have to tie some loose ends. Aizuna notices the presence of many shinobis hidden inside the forest. Sherinan. He activates his Sherinan and inspects his assailants. Hm root members. Danzo I almost forgot about you and here you are? You came knocking on my doorsteps. Looks like you are fed up with your life and want to have a meeting with the king of hell. What's the meaning of this? Why are so many Root members hot on my trail? I don't think I have done anything to garner this much attention from Root. I am not even a part of Umbu anymore, so what's the meaning of this? Aizuna questions them. He is really curious to know their reasoning. The Root members take out their shurikens and throw them towards Aizuna. So, you have no intention of speaking. Fine with me, I will figure out everything from your cold corpses. Now, let's dance. Aizuna takes out his tanto and skillfully deflects all the incoming shurikens. He summons a shuriken from his bracers and makes some hand signs. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. The shuriken replicates into many copies and shoots towards the root members. 
The root members take out their blades and skillfully deflects all the shurikens. Oh, all of them are quite skillful and there are about 50 elite root members. Well, their numbers don't matter to me. Be it 50 or 100, all of them are the same cold corpse in my eyes. Aizuna stretches his hand and infuses chakra in his hand. The chakra shapes into a longbow with a taut string. Aizuna plucks the string to full tension. Light style, rapid fire stream. Twang. He releases the tension from the bowstring. Swish, swish. Various homing arrows projectiles chases down the root members. It is a wide range jutsu. Defense unit erects a barrier. Sensor unit lock on his chakra. Sealing unit gets ready to seal his movements. One of the root member orders other members. Many root shinobis walk in front and make some hand signs. Cooperation ninjutsu, rashomon barrier. They erect a multi-layered barrier to block the arrows. All the root members take cover behind the barrier. Water style, high pressure jet. Aizuna fires a high pressure jet of water to cut through the barrier. Defense unit, change the type of barrier to match his jutsu. The barrier unit immediately makes hand signs and erects an additional barrier in seconds. You guys are quite prepared. Have you studied all of my details and formulated a plan to counter me? If that's the case, let me see the extent of your preparation. It has been a while since I used Teijutsu in a fight. Aizuna cracks his neck and stretches his muscles. Side story hashtag Hayaga Affair Part 2 inside Ambu headquarters. Tap, tap, tap. Aizuna slowly taps his fingers on a table as he waits for his team members. Hmm. Captain is lost in some serious thoughts. He hasn't moved from that position for a while. Ujo whispers to a nearby Ambu member. What do you think he is thinking about? Kakashi Senpai. Ujo turns to Kakashi. Looks like we have received a new task from Hokage Sama. I heard about the peace treaty with Kumagakur. Maybe our mission is related to it. Kakashi calmly replies to her. Aizuna stands up from his seat and turns towards Ambu members. Why didn't I think of this before? I can simply use it to capture the criminal red-handed. Ujo. Aizuna turns towards Ujo and orders. Ujo, buy me a high-quality video camera currently available in the market. Eh, uh, what? The sudden order startles everyone and one of the Ambu members questions. I am sorry if it sounds rude captain, but I want to know why you want to buy a video camera. I mean, I thought you called us for a mission. Hum, hum. The rest of the team members nods their head. Oh, it's nothing. I just want a camera to record a movie. As for the mission, I indeed have a mission for you. I will explain once Ujo brings me the camera. Aizuna forks out a handful of Ryo notes from his pocket and hands them to Ujo. Ujo, go buy the camera. Ujo takes the money and flickers out to buy the camera. Aizuna sits again on the table and continues to tap his fingers. Why I never thought of this before. I can just record the entire incident on the camera as proof and present it during the meeting with Reikage. If Kumagakur still doesn't oblige by the peace treaty, then all I have to do is just infiltrate their village and kidnap the two tails or eight tails out from the village. Yo, yo, we. Oui. The image of Killer B rapping appears in his mind. Nah, I think I will skip eight tails. It is better to kidnap the two tails. I can't handle that guy's ear rape all by myself. But still why I didn't think of recording it earlier. The technology of Shinobi world is weird. There is a f***ing laptop in this world but apparently, they still haven't figured out the wireless communication over a long distance. Captain. Captain. Aizuna's train of thoughts is broken when Ujo appears before him. She is holding a camcorder in her hands. I have fulfilled the task you gave me. Ujo looks at Aizuna with expectation. Sigh. This girl is quite eager to do every job. I just trained her for a few days in Umbu and now I have turned into her idol. Maybe it is not a bad thing. Aizuna takes the camcorder and checks it's working. Hmm, it is similar to the camera I know. So, it won't be hard to operate it. Aizuna turns towards his Umbu team and yells. All of you, say cheese. An awkward expression appears on their face as they weirdly look at their captain. What do we do? I don't know. What is captain's order? All of them start to murmur among themselves. Has captain gone insane? His behavior is quite odd today. Someone silently remarks in the crowd. No, I think he is behaving normally. He always uses strange verbal tics in his speech. Another Umbu remarks. A tick mark appears on Aizuna's forehead as he stares at his Umbu team. All of you give a goddamn pose for a photo. I want to test the new camera. He roars at them. Yes, sir. All of them line up and make funny faces while trying to smile. One of them has a large scar down his cheek and he looks more intimidating while smiling with that huge body of his. Bunko, you look menacing with that smile of yours. You should better stop smiling. Aizuna remarks at the huge guy. But captain, I was. I was born this way. The huge guy drops his head in depression. Aizuna makes a shadow clone and takes a photo with them. I will miss this band of scoundrels. I will apply for retirement after completing this mission. I want to explore the outside world freely and staying in Umbu will hinder me. The photo session causes a cheerful expression in the meeting room of Team Row. Cough, cough. Aizuna coughs loudly to draw their attention. Playtime is over. It's time to get serious. The expression of all Umbu members changes as they adopt a serious expression. After gathering everyone's attention, Aizuna continues. I am sure most of you are aware of the recent peace treaty between Kumagakur and Kanahagakur. An entourage of Kumo will arrive tomorrow to sign the peace treaty. 
So, to make sure Kumagakur doesn't play any dirty tricks, Hokage-sama has ordered our team to ensure the safety of the village. All of them nods their head. Aizuna stops and looks at his team members. Now, I will assign various tasks and make a strategy for efficiency. Aizuna assigns various tasks according to their abilities. Finally, he turns towards Ujo and Kakashi. Kakashi, I want you to monitor the residents of Kumagakur during this entire mission. If you receive my signal, then immediately capture all of them. Yes, Captain. Kakashi nods his head. As for you, Ujo, how about going out to a birthday party with me? Eh, Ujo freaks out at this sudden proposal. Is Captain asking me on a date? But, but, isn't it too early? Ujo starts to fantasize about various things in her mind. A blush appears on her face. What's up this girl? Aizuna cluelessly stares at her. I just invited her because nobody will suspect her as an umbu. She doesn't have any particular achievement under her belt, and hardly anyone knows about her. For me, I am part of the Uchiha clan and thus I received an invitation from one of the main family members I saved during the Third Shinobi War. He turns towards her and questions. Ujo, do you hear me? Yes, yes, Captain. I have a hunch that the Kumagakur will join the birthday celebration of Hayaga Princess. So, both of us will disguise over self and join the birthday party. I have an invitation to the party. You can tag along. He explains to her. Yes, Captain. Ujo nods her head with a blush. What should I wear for the party? I have to shop for some clothes for this occasion. Aizuna ignores her and continues to assign guard duties to other team members. I have to choose the possible routes around the Hayaga clan and the Kumo ninja's residence for the guard duty. It would be easy to capture them once they move. Next day, the entourage of the Kumagakur arrived in Kanaha. Hiruzen personally escorted them to the meeting room, and both sides signed the peace treaty. Hiruzen shook hands with the head ninja of Kumagakur. Kanaha wish for a long peaceful corporation. Kumagakur, to wish for a peaceful corporation. Kohara, Homura, and Danzo nods their head and escort the head ninja. The head ninja turns towards Hiruzen and requests. I heard the Hayaga clan is celebrating the third birthday of their princess. It would be an honor to partake in such an event, if possible. I think such an occasion will allow both villages to further improve their relationship down the road. The head ninja has a sly smile on his face when he proposes the suggestion. Reikajsama is waiting at Land of Hot Water's borders, together with Ambu members. If I can successfully capture the Byakugan, then Arkumo will be able to research the secrets of this Kekai Jenkai. Arkumagakur suffered a huge loss in the Third War due to the Hayaga clan. This. Hiruzen hesitates for a while before signaling a nearby Ambu member. The Ambu members flicker towards the Hayaga clan. I would have to request permission from the Hayaga clan head for this matter. If he allows, then you can certainly participate in the meeting. Hiruzen tries to appease the head ninja. Sigh. The head ninja sighs and turns around while replying. I thought that such an interaction will further strengthen our relationship. But I guess Kanaha doesn't share the same sentiments. Anyway, my work is done here. So, I will return to Kumo. Wait, wait. Kanaha is eager to strengthen our relationship. I will personally talk with the Hayaga clan head. Hiruzen turns towards Homura and Koharu. Homura, Koharu, please escort our guest around the various scenic spots of the village while I meet with the Hayaga clan head. Very well. Both of them nod their head and escort the head ninja. An unnoticeable grin appears on head ninja's face. Where would you like to start, respected guest? Koharu questions him. He quickly hides his grin and replies. Let's start with the place with most people. Oh, so our guest would like to visit a public bathhouse. I will escort you there. Homura leads the head ninja towards the bathhouse. So, it looks like our respected guest is such kind of person. Homura has a knowing smile on his face. Ah, uh, yes, yes. The head ninja scratches his head. WTF? I just want to see their training ground. I think it is the busiest place, but a bathhouse. Well, never mind I deserve a break after breaking all that sweat in the meeting. 86 Loose Ends Part 2 Aizuna prepares to open 8's gates. Stop him, we can't allow him to complete his technique. The leader of the team shouts. All the root umbus throws multiple kunaus and shuriken towards Aizuna. Haya. Gate of opening. Gate of healing. Gate of life. Gate of pain. Gate of limit. Gate of view. Open. Aizuna crosses his hands in front of his hand and opens six gates simultaneously. A green aura surrounds Aizuna, and it flares his chakra up to very high intensity. The opening of the sixth gate releases a shock wave and repels all the incoming kunaus and shurikens. Haya. Aizuna disappears from his spot and reappears in front of a root member. He clenches his fist and uses the chakra strengthening technique and punches the chest of the root shinobi. Crack. The ribs of the umbu shatter and his body is flung across the forest by the impulse of the punch. Boom. One of the root ninjas throws a paper bomb towards Aizuna. Aizuna disappears again and reappears in front of the ninja. He grabs the neck of the ninja and slams him on the ground. A small crater at the point of impact, the fate of the root ninja unknown. Guess I will add more power output. Aizuna crosses his hands and yells. Power release, chakra cloak. A dark red cloak made of lightning and fire cloaks Aizuna. His muscles expand from the stimulus of lightning. Lightning flickers around his eyes and Aizuna disappear once again. Swish, boom. His speed releases a sonic boom, and the ground explodes under his foot. Only a dark red flash could be seen as it wreaks havoc wherever it passes by. Boom. 
Aizuna punches one of the root ninjas. The poor root ninja explodes into a shower of blood and flesh from the punch. Aizuna disappears again and punches another root ninja to a pulp. Multiple root umbus makes many hand signs and claps their hands. Cooperation Jutsu, Tormenting Thunderstorm. All the releases lightning chakra towards the sky. The lightning chakra condenses into a thick bolt of lightning and attacks Aizuna. The bolt of lightning engulfs Aizuna. Did we get him? Dark release, chakra absorption. Two dark red overlapping diamond marks appear on Aizuna's right palm. Aizuna absorbs the entire lightning cooperation jutsu through the mark. You can have it back. He directs his palm towards the root ninjas. Dark release, chakra expulsion. The thick bolt of lightning expels from the diamond markings and zaps many root members to death. The target has a technique to absorb over jutsu. Switch to kenjutsu and teijutsu. The leader orders his subordinates. Unfazed by the death of their comrades, the rest of the root shinobi surround Aizuna and throws multiple kunaos tied with the paper bomb at him. Magnet release, reverse polarity. Aizuna repels the kunaos and shurikens back to the root shinobis. Boom. The paper bombs explode on the root shinobis, killing them in process. The target can use multiple kekai genkai nature transformations. His threat level has increased to S rank. We need to warn Danso Sama about this matter. One of you retreat quickly. The leader orders the root members. Power release, judgment spear. Aizuna condenses the power release chakra into his hand and shapes it in the form of a spear. He aims it towards the running root ninjas and locks on his chakra signature. Release. Boom. The spear travels at supersonic speed, devastating nearby trees. It pierces through the running root ninja. Mission failure. I report mission failure. The target is stronger than expected. We have to retreat and report to Danso Sama. The leader orders his troops and turns around and dashes off toward root. What's the hurry? Since you have come already don't leave without accepting my services. Swift release, Godspeed. Aizuna appears in front of the leader and grabs him by the neck. No matter what you do, I won't reveal any information regarding my mission to you. The leader struggles in Aizuna's grip. There is no need for you to reveal anything, I will extract the information on my own. Aizuna activates his Manjikyo Sherinan to extract information from the leader. Click. The leader clicks his tongue and pulls out his chest garment and triggers a sealing formula. Reverse four symbol sealing seal. Four sealing symbols are released from his chest and form a large, black sphere around him. The seal starts to suck nearby objects inside him and seal them inside. Aizuna pushes back the umbu and escapes from the sealing formula with his speed. Guess I have to figure out everything from Danzo himself. Aizuna picks up the corpse of the leader and runs towards the umbu headquarter. It is time to cut some loose ends. He is the main perpetrator behind the Uchiha massacre and various other events. I don't want such tragedies to happen again. I will deal with him before I set out on my journey. Inside the root headquarters. Danzo moves back and forth while contemplating over some matters. The vision in my right eye is fading away. I need a substitute for my right eye. My initial plan was to retrieve Sherry Nan from Kakashi Heitake, but Sakamo is too much for me to handle. Danzo touches his right eye and removes the bandages around it. His vision is a little blurry in the right eye. That Uchiha kid with the moniker of Silent Shinigami perfectly fits my criteria. His Sherry Nan is mutated one and as far as I can see through his achievements, the Sherry Nan has no side effects. Danzo picks up a file with the picture and information of Aizuna on it. Name, Aizuna Uchiha. Age, 13 years. Rank, a rank threat level. Special traits, possess a special mutated Sherry Nan. Achievements, graduated from the academy at the age of 6. Promoted to Chunin at the age of 8. Had extraordinary achievements in the Third Shinobi War and got a moniker of Silent Shinigami. Joined Umbu at the age of 9. Got promoted to Vice Captain in a year and another promotion to Captain in another 2 years. Missions, 30 S rank missions with a team, 68 A rank missions, 79 B rank missions, 23 Crank missions, and 36 Drank missions. Danzo throws the file back on the table and ponders. The kid just left the village on a long-term mission, and it is a perfect time to strike and take his sherry non. I can later manipulate the news to declare him as a missing in action. My plan to cause unrest between Uchiha and the village is bearing some fruits. Hiruzen's incompetency is harming the village. I almost succeeding in assassinating him. That damn traitor Kino revealed the information to Hiruzen. I saved him from Orikimura's experiment. Gave him the freedom and personally trained him. This is how he repays me. A counterfeit will always be a counterfeit. Danzo looks at his left shoulder and sighs. Luckily, I could make some use of Orikimaro. His ambitions and intentions had grown way too much. I wasn't able to control him anymore. He has become a threat to me. So, I have to deal with him. And what better way than to reveal the wrongdoings of his student to Hiruzen. But that Hiruzen is too soft. He let go of an s rank criminal and a potential threat to the village. Danzo clenches his fist and scoffs at the incompetency of Hiruzen. Orikimaro has complete intel on the power structure of the village, including Umbu and Root. I have to hunt him down. That recruit Kabuto Yakushi will be the perfect candidate. He just needs some training and he will be up for the job. Danzo sits on his hokage chair and plans his next step. After I acquire the Sherry Non, my next would be the manipulation of Nine Tails. With the power of Nine Tails under my control, I can easily gain the position of hokage. Then my quest to make Kanaha the most powerful village will start. It won't be long before I become the sole ruler of all nations. Cuckoo. 
Haha, <laughs> Danzo laughs hysterically as he lost in his fantasies. Boom, boom. Multiple explosion occurs near the gate of Root headquarters. The sound of the explosion breaks Danzo's daydream. He snaps at one of his subordinate and orders him. Check the reason of this commotion. Who dare to cause such a ruckus at Root's headquarters? Immediately capture and neutralize the source of trouble, no matter who it is. Yes, Danzo-sama. The Umbu member bows to Danzo and rush to order other Root members. Such blatant disrespect. Looks like the intruder takes me as a soft persimmon to dare cause trouble at my turf. I don't fear any consequences, with such power in my grasp, how can I allow anyone to squash my prestige? I will personally head out to face the intruder. Danzo wears his combat outfit and gets ready to engage the intruder. 87 Farewell Danzo Part 1 Boom, boom. Another explosion occurs, and it blows away the gate of the hall. The dust and debris clear to reveal Izuna. It surprises Danzo to see Izuna and he questions. You? How come you are here? Where are my root umbus? Izuna throws the body of the team captain towards Danzo and replies. Did you expect your dogs to maul me? You have quite high expectations for your subordinates. Danzo Shimura, you have made a huge mistake by laying your hands on me. If my guess is correct, you are after my Sherinon. Am I right? Danzo's mouth gapes open wide as he looks at Izuna. Let me guess? Your previous Sherinon is failing you and you want a replacement for it. Izuna nonchalantly looks at Danzo. Danzo gather his wits and smirk at Izuna. Kid, you are smart for your age. But you are foolish enough for walking straight into my turf and deliver the Sherinon to me. Haha. <laughs> Danzo laughs at Izuna's foolishness. Ha? Huh? Those are quite bold words for a Suntobe dead man. Izuna remarks as he slowly walks towards Danzo. Danzo's expression turns sour and he orders his umbu. Men, kill him. He may escape from the encirclement of previous teams, but this time he is in our headquarters. You shall leave no trace of him. Don't harm his sherry non, they will become the replacement for my right eye. Nearby root members surround Izuna as they prepare to cast their jutsu. Danzo, do you think these bunch of people can stop me? I don't even need to blink to deal with them. Izuna's eyes turn into Mangekyo sherry non. Don't look in his eyes, Danzo yells loudly to his subordinates, but it is too late. Genjutsu, Uchiha style, hell's purgatory. Izuna cast a powerful genjutsu on root members. He slowly walks towards Danzo and stands in front of him. Now, it is only you and me, Danzo. Show me your skills and power which you boast off. Izuna looks at Danzo. Danzo removes the bandage around his eye to reveal a fully mature Sherinon. So, you want to fight me with a borrowed Sherinon? Do you honestly think you can beat the real deal with your borrowed power? Izuna makes some hand signs and starts the battle with his classic move. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Izuna launches a giant fireball towards Danzo. Danzo makes some hand signs. Water style, water bullet jutsu. He fires off a large water bullet to cancel the fireball jutsu. Danzo makes some more hand signs and coats his legs in wind chakra. Wind style, gale steps. He quickly dashes towards Izuna and pulls out a sword from his back to stab Izuna. Metal release, iron claw. Izuna's palm turns in metal and collides with the sword. Clank. The sword snaps into half from the impact. This is. Danzo's eyes widens as he looks at Izuna's arm. How this kid can use metal release. Swift release, godspeed. Izuna vanishes and appears in front of Danzo. He punches Danzo in guts and sends him flying through the roof. Barf. Danzo's pukes out a mouthful of blood. There is a fist-size hole in his stomach. Don't worry, Danzo. No one will disturb us. I have erected a barrier around this place. Paired with silencing seals and illusion techniques, no one will be aware of our fight here. I will silently deal with you and leave the village. At least, I will spare some of your dignity. You have taken no particular step to harm my family, so a quick death will do. Izuna slowly walks towards Danzo. Danzo's body disappears and reappears behind Izuna with a kunao in his hand and tries to stab him. Clank. The kunao snaps in half in contact with Izuna's back. Izanagi, do you honestly believe I am not aware of this forbidden technique of the Uchiha clan associated with their Sherinon? Tell me how many Uchiha clan members you killed to gain those eyes. Izuna stares at Danzo with a cold expression. Damn, this Uchiha kid is much greater of a threat than I expected. I have to quickly deal with him. Danzo jumps back and removes the bandages from his right arm to reveal a large golden bracer. He slowly unseals the bracer to reveal a decrepit brown prosthetic arm with many sherry nons on it. Danzo throws the bracer aside and makes some hand signs. Wind release, vacuum serial wave. He fires several wind blades in Izuna's direction. Izuna dodges all the wind blades with his speed. Wind release, vacuum blade. Danzo spews out a wind chakra on his kunao to increase its sharpness, range, and lethality. The kunao forms a makeshift scimitar. He swings the blade towards Izuna. Wind release, wind wave. A powerful wind current rushes towards Izuna. Izuna coats his chakra blade with wind chakra and slashes it down. Wind release, wave splitter. Izuna slashes Danzo's jutsu in half and engages with Danzo. Both of them fight with their blades. Izuna infuses more chakra in his blade and slices Danzo's blade in half together with his body. Danzo's body splits in half, and it falls on the ground. Whoosh. Danzo's body disappears, and he reappears behind Izuna as he makes some hand signs. Wind release, vacuum great sphere. 
Danzo inhales an enormous amount of air and expels it in the form of a compressed, crushing wind sphere behind Aizuna's back. A golden ribcage forms behind Aizuna and blocks the attack. Out of nowhere, a silver arm grabs Danzo and squeezes him into pulp. Whoosh. Danzo's body disappears again, and he reappears in front of Aizuna. Huff, huff. Danzo breathes heavily as he looks at the chakra construct. So, that's the legendary Suzano available to Uchiha clansmen who have unlocked and mastered his Mangekyo Sharinan. Impressive. He has the power of Mangekyo. I can win this fight alone. I need some help. Danzo makes some hand signs and slams his hand on the ground. Summoning Jutsu. A large elephantine chimera with orange fur appears. The creature has stripped legs similar to a tiger and huge tusks protrude from its mouth. The ginormous size of the creature is comparable to a full body nine tails. Baku devour him. Danzo commands the creature. The creature opens its mouth and sucks everything around it. The powerful suction force pulls Aizuna towards it. Oh, so Danzo is using his summon. I think he is going to pull the same strategy he pulled against Suzuki. Danzo appears behind Aizuna's back and makes some hand sign. Wind release, vacuum serial wave. Danzo bombards various wind blades at the back of Suzano. The wind blades are further empowered by the suction force of his summon. The Suzano rib cage easily blocks all of Danzo's attack with no scratch on it. Impossible? How is this possible? Danzo shouts in disbelief. You like to eat things, then eat this. Aizuna stretches out his right hand. Green chakra gathers in his palm. Radiation release, nuclear raisinon. Aizuna forms a radiation release raisinon and throws it towards the summon. The raisinon is green with many unstable particles continuously emitting from it. Boom. The raisinon explodes near the chimera and covers its entire body. The summon's outer skin melts from the radiation, its skeleton appears beneath the skin. Poof. The chimera summons disappears in a puff of smoke. Aizuna dispels his Suzano. Danzo tries to take advantage of the situation and appears behind Aizuna to stab him. Inferno release, flame control. White flames appear around Aizuna. The flames shape into a spear and stab through Danzo's heart. Barf. Danzo pukes out another mouthful of blood, and his body disappears again. He reappears at another place some distance away. Danzo looks at his right arm and notices the lack of Sherinon. Damn, that was my last Sherinon. He claps his hands and yells. Wood release, nativity of a sea of trees. A small forest sprouts from the ground and blocks Aizuna's vision. Danzo escapes from the spot as he murmurs. I never expected this. He possesses a Mangekyo Sharinan and many other Kekai Jenkai. The information I collected regarding him didn't state any of this. I have underestimated his power. I have to escape and find another way to deal with him. He is too dangerous to be left alone for my plans. I will ask help from Orikimura. The body of an Uchiha will interest him while I get to keep his eyes. Danzo runs towards a secret exit to escape. He triggers a mechanism and blows the entrance of the secret exit. Oh, trying to escape when the situation turned unfavorable. Do you think I will allow it so easily? Fire release, majestic flame destroyer. He burns the entire forest to cinders. He closes his eyes to sense the chakra signature of Danzo. He spots Danzo running through an underground secret passage. Found you? Aizuna spots a frantic Danzo. Swift release, sonic steps. He immediately chases after Danzo. He appears in front of the blocked entrance. Kamui. Aizuna walks through the blocked entrance and enters the secret passage. This ability of Obito is very handy. He dashes in front of Danzo and blocks his way. Do you honestly believe I will allow you to escape so easily? It is time to pay for your evil deeds, Danzo. I have a perfect technique for traitors like you. Purple lightning, Chidori Rakery. Chirp, Kai. Purple electricity gathers in Aizuna's palm and shapes in a blade. Aizuna dashes towards Danzo to stab him. Farewell, Danzo 88. Farewell Danzo part 2 a slash n. Sorry for the delay. I had an exam. Purple lightning, Chidori Rakery. Chirp, Chi. Purple electricity gathers in Aizuna's palm and shapes in a blade. Aizuna dashes towards Danzo to stab him. Danzo has an ugly expression as he looks at Aizuna. You have forced my hand, kid. I wanted to preserve this technique, but you forced me to use it. Mangekyo Sharinan. Danzo's right eye turns into a Mangekyo Sharinan. His Mangekyo Sharinan has a two-point pinwheel pattern. This pattern. How come you have his Mangekyo Sharinan? Danzo makes a rem seal near his right eye and yells. Kami Yonaneo. Blood leaks from his right eyes and an enormous amount of chakra drain from his body. Aizuna continues to dash towards Danzo and impales his heart with the Chidori. Danzo pukes out a mouthful of blood and fell on the ground. Aizuna grabs Danzo's right eye and pulls it out. You have no right to possess this eye, even as a corpse. Aizuna stores the eye in a container and turns around to leave. Stab. A wooden pike stabs through Aizuna's gut. Arg, barf. Aizuna pukes out a mouthful of blood and turns around. He ignores the wound and looks at the attacker. Wood style, wood pike. Danzo stabs Aizuna's back with a wooden stake. He smiles at Aizuna and tries to stab further. Aizuna swings his hand and breaks the wooden stake. He pulls the stake out of his body and burns it into ashes. Danzo jumps back and makes some unknown hand signs. The hole near his heart fills up and Danzo's right eye returns to him. Aizuna's eyes widen as he looks at Danzo. What? This is. Ha ha, ha ha. Danzo laughs hysterically and looks at Aizuna. 
Aizuna checks his storage scroll to examine the eye. The eye in his possession fades and vanish completely. Izanagi, is it Izanagi? But I destroyed all of his sherry nons. Then, it must be a genjutsu. How come it is a genjutsu? I should be immune to genjutsu, even powerful ones unless it is his manjiku ability. Let me try to dispel this genjutsu. Aizuna makes multiple hand signs and tries to dispel the genjutsu. Danzo closes the distance again and tries to stab Aizuna with a kunao. Aizuna infuses chakra in his right hand. His right chakra turns metallic, and he clenches it into a fist and punches Danzo heavily. Whoosh, bam. Danzo slams into a nearby wall and pukes another mouthful of blood. There is a fist-size hole in his guts. Danzo slowly stands up and wipes away the blood from his face. He makes those unusual hand signs again, and his wound closes again. Danzo's body returns to normal. This, what's this? What kind of ability is this? Is this affecting my senses or is this affecting Danzo too? This ability seems similar to Izanami and Izanagi, but then again I took a hit and felt pain. Izuna analyzes the Manjiku ability of Danzo. His wound heals completely and Izuna prepares to launch another Jutsu at Danzo while contemplating over the weird ability. Danzo notices Izuna's regeneration and remarks. Oh, you heal pretty quickly, similar to Lord Hashirama. Is this Tsunade's teaching? She developed powerful medical ninjutsu and your technique resembles that. So, you have modified her technique. He concludes. He makes those unusual hand signs after taking a hit from me. If I completely decapitate him and prevent from forming those hand signs, will he revive? Let me see if you can recover from this technique. Aizuna grasps his right wrist and infuses chakra in it. His right hand gets covered in strange markings and totems. Darkness release, blackout raisinon. Aizuna forms a pitch black raisinon with sinister dark chakra. Release. He throws the raisinon towards Danzo. The raisinon engulfs the entire body of Danzo. Danzo's entire body gets consumed by the darkness, and it leaves not even a trace of him. It is finally over. He won't return, right? Aizuna comes down and searches around. Ha ha, ha ha. Danzo's hysterical laugh rang in Aizuna's ears. He turns around to see various particles condensing together to shape into Danzo. You can't kill me as long as this jutsu is active. I won't die by any means. Ha ha. Aizuna's expression turns cold, and he shouts. Then I will kill you as many times as you respawn. Let's see what will last longer, your technique, or my chakra. Aizuna makes some hand signs and disappears from his position. Swift release, sonic steps. Light release, lightsaber. He pierces Danzo's body again. Danzo smirks and punches Aizuna. Aizuna jumps back and avoids the punch. Danzo's body recovers again. Danzo makes those unusual hand signs again. These hand signs, what's their purpose? It seems like he is resetting something. Resetting, resetting, wait a sec, it looks like a time loop. Could it be he is manipulating his own time and set it in a loop? Izanagi allows a user to turn reality into illusion and change their destiny whereas Izanami allows the user to form a loop of thoughts and trap the target in constant turns of events. It sets a predetermined destiny for them, and it forces the target to accept the predestined outcome to dispel the jutsu. Danzo's jutsu seems to be a mix of both Izanami and Izanagi, but who is the target? Is it Danzo or is it only me or both of us are the targets? Izuna tries to figure out Danzo's jutsu. He continues to fend off Danzo's attack as he speculates the nature of jutsu. Danzo continues to die and resurrect again and again. It's not looking good. This kid has massive reserves of chakra. He can continue to fight me as long as he wishes. I used Kami Yonaneo as a last resort to deal with him, but he is more powerful than my expectations. I have no choice but to flee. The vision in my right eye is lost permanently. Kagami, your manjikyo lasted me long enough. It was wise of me to rob your grave and extract your sherinan. Too bad I can't use this power anymore. I have to pay a price, every time I use this jutsu. Thanks to first Hokage cells, I could survive. Danzo sighs in loss. Found it. I have found a loophole in this technique. Since it is a time-related technique, then I can override this loop with my time manipulation. Aizuna activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and yells. Amen Aminakanushi. Blood trickles from Aizuna's left eye. The space-time in the area warps in. Ha. Aizuna riles up his chakra and forces the time loop to collapse. Crack, crack. Various cracks appear in the surrounding space as Aizuna continues to rile chakra. The cracks magnify as the surrounding space continues to crumble. Shatter. With a loud noise, the surrounding space shatters, and the time loop breaks. Arg, ugh. Danzo pukes out a large mouthful of blood and collapses on the ground. All of his hairs turn white and his body shrivels and many wrinkles appear on his body. He lays helplessly on the ground. The backlash took a huge toll on his body. Cough, cough. Danzo coughs and looks towards Aizuna. Fear and despair is evident in his eyes. Huh? I never imagined you could make such an expression. The respected and wise elder of Kanaha is afraid. You possess the eyes of Kagami Uchiha, tell me how you got them. Aizuna riles up his chakra and pressures Danzo. Danzo doesn't respond. You have soiled the honor of one of my ancestors. Those eyes, you aren't worthy of them. Aizuna slowly walks up to Danzo and rips off the right eye. I will take them back. I don't want to even see your face again. You don't even deserve an afterlife, I will seal you for eternity. Limbo Hengoku. Aizuna activates his Manjiku ability and summons a Limbo. The Limbo makes some hand signs and clasps its hand. 
dead demon consuming seal. A large Shinigami appears behind Limbo. The Shinigami extends its hand and stabs through the chest of Limbo. The hand continues towards Danzo and grabs his body and pulls out his soul. No, stop it. You can't do it. Don't. Danzo struggles to get free, but all of his efforts seems futile. The Shinigami pulls Danzo's soul out of his body and seals it. Danzo's body lifelessly drops on the ground. Now suffer in endless darkness for all eternity. Izuna clasps his hand again. The Shinigami vanishes and the limbo fades away. I won't be able to use him for a while, but I have dealt with one of my troubles and even harvested a reward. Kami Yonaneo, Grandpa Kagami possessed quite a powerful technique, but its requirement and after effects are way too severe. Well, it justifies the trade-off. I have to awaken Rinnegan together with six paths sage mode to use it freely. Izuna looks at Danzo's corpse. He pulls out the right arm and makes some hand signs. Inferno release, searing flames. White flames cover Danzo's body and turn it into ashes. Izuna walks towards the root umbus and manipulates their memories. I can only do this much for you. Find your place in society on your own. It's time for me to start my journey. Izuna walks out of the root headquarters and disappears into the forest. Interesting, very interesting. After a while, a crack opens in space, and a cloaked figure walks out of it. He appears at the place of the battle and looks at the destruction. Did he honestly think true death exists for a soul clan members? 89 Shikotsu Forest Part 1 After dealing with Danzo, Izuna moves out of the village. I have dealt with Danzo. He won't be a nuisance anymore. Now it's time for training. My first destination is Shikotsu Forest. It is one of the sage regions of the Shinobi world. One could quickly learn sage mode if they practice here. I have to learn the six path sage mode if I want to heal Minato and Kushina. Obito and Grandpa Madara acquired it after becoming the Jinchuriki of Tendales, and Naruto received it directly from Hago Romo at Satsuki. Most of them lost six path sage mode later on. Naruto can't use truth seeking balls anymore. I want to figure out the secret behind it, and I want to learn it permanently. There is no use of this power if it can't be utilized again. So, I have to learn the secrets of sage art. This journey to sage regions will help me learn the secrets and the origin of sage arts. I don't believe a bunch of toads, snakes, and slugs figured sage art on their own. Izuna closes his eyes and concentrates on the marking he placed on Katsuyu. After concentrating for a while, Izuna figured out the space coordinates of his markings. He teleported and appeared inside a forest. Izuna looks around to figure out his location. There are massive trees in the forest, the size of which could easily dwarf any of the tailed beast. Huge, such gigantic trees. Izuna raises his neck to figure out the height of the trees. The trees are almost touching the clouds and still, there is no sign of their top. Let me test their sturdiness. Izuna clenches his fist and infuses a small amount of chakra. He dashes towards a nearby tree and punches its trunk. Bang. His punch leaves a small dent in the trunk of the tree. There is no large hole or anything. Such a sturdy tree. It felt like I just punched a metal wall. No, even steel isn't as sturdy as this. Is this the effect of Senjutsu Chakra? These trees basked in Senjutsu Chakra for eons and now they have evolved to the such extent. The tree regenerates from the impact. I wonder how strong the original Shinja tree was. Well, Naruto chopped it down with his lava release, Raisin Shuriken. But that Raisin Shuriken has six paths Sage Chakra in it. So, I don't know the exact extent of its power. Now, let's roam around the forest and scout it. I hope to see Katsuyu soon. I still don't know why I teleported to this place instead of Katsuyu. Izuna climbs on the huge tree and inspects around. I can't see anything. These damn trees block my vision. He jumps down and saunters inside the forest. He walks for a while inside the forest. I have yet to encounter any native animal of this place. I think only summons live in this place. I wonder how summons makes a summoning contract with a ninja. Well, some kind of space-time ninjutsu is involved to let them teleport directly to their summoner. But how come the summoner can summon any kind of summon of same species when he just makes a contract with them? The figure of Jiraiya with many toads pops up in his memory. Jiraiya gives a thumb up to Izuna with a perverted smile. Izuna shakes his head and continues to contemplate this matter while walking inside the forest. I hope to meet someone soon. Rar. His line of thoughts is broken by the roar of a creature. Izuna gets ready to engage the creature. Well, that was fast. A giant tiger with forked tail pounce over Izuna. Izuna ducks down and rolls to avoid the pounce. The tiger failed to hunt his prey on the first attempt. It turns around and stares at Izuna. The massive claws of the tiger glisten in the dim sunlight. Rar. The tiger tries to smash Izuna with its paws. These trees are sturdy due to Senjutsu Chakra, but what about you? Izuna clenches his fist and infuses Chakra in it. His fist turns metallic, and he punches the tiger at its jaw. Bang. The tiger is sent flying from the punch. One of its canine breaks. The tiger slowly stands up and angrily looks at Izuna. Rar. It opens its mouth and spews out a jet of flames at Izuna. Izuna makes a one-hand sign. Water style, water bullet jutsu. He spews out a water bullet at the incoming fire. The water bullet cancels out the fireball and continues to move towards the tiger. Bam. It hits the tiger squarely in its face and sends him flying again. The tiger crashes into another tree. Rar. The tiger slowly stands up and roars again. Its skin turns red, and its strips forms a strange pattern over its body. 
Senjutsu Chakra, that's Senjutsu Chakra. This wild cat can use Senjutsu Chakra. Aizuna activates his Sherry Non and scrutinize the process. Rar. The tiger roars again and pounces on Aizuna. Aizuna infuses a little more Chakra and punches the tiger again. The tiger crashes into another boulder. Do you think that will make any difference? You are still a weak little cat. This forest can help me train in Taijutsu skills. I should master the opening of the seventh gate here. These huge animals with strange sage chakra will be the perfect target for practice. Their body can take a beating and still survive. Then, I will beat them to my heart's content. Aizuna stops using ninjutsu and opens up six gates and engages in combat with the sage-powered tiger. After beating the tiger for a while, he feels hungry. He looks at the giant tiger and murmur. I wonder how this giant cat will taste like. The giant tiger shivers upon hearing these words. It turns tame and makes a cute posture. Meow, meow. The tiger meows in front of Aizuna and rolls around on its belly. Aizuna speechlessly looks at the tiger. He understood me. So, this large cat has some level of intellect. Nah, I will hunt for something else to eat. I don't really like the taste of a tiger. You better come tomorrow for the beating. I mean training or I may change my mind any instant. The tiger turns around and dashes inside the forest like a cheetah. Underscore. This giant cat. Sigh. Aizuna sighs and hunts for prey. He soon spots a giant wild boar. The wild boar notices Aizuna and charges towards him. After a few minutes later, Aizuna is roasting the giant boar on a large skewer. The aroma from the roasted meat enters his nose, and he starts to hum. I should add some seasoning to it. Aizuna takes out a scroll and adds salt, pepper, and other spices to the roast meat. The fragrance enchants him and drool leaks from his mouth. He gulps his saliva and breaks a large chunk of meat. Itadakamesu. Aizuna takes a huge bite from the meat and eats it. Good, so good. This roasted boar meat is so good. I can even feel my chakra reserve grow a little. Only a little bit. But this is still a huge discovery. Aizuna continues to eat the roast meat as he completely ignores the pack of giant wolves and many other carnivore creatures around him. After taking another bite, Aizuna places down the huge chunk of meat. It's time to exercise again. He cracks his knuckles and engages in another fight with these giant animals. Bang, bang, boom. After an hour of an intense fight, Aizuna returns to the spot to continue his meal. But there is no sign of his meat anywhere. Who the fuck stole my food? Aizuna yells angrily. He gets his answer shortly. There is a giant hole just beneath the skewer. It's one of the underground worms. Next time I spot you, I will eradicate your whole colony. Thankfully, I stored some of it separately. He takes out a piece of roasted meat and eats it while grumbling over the loss of such fine food. A few days later, Aizuna continues to explore the large Shikotsu forest. He honed his Taijutsu skills in combat against the wild animals of the forest. I am not gaining any combat experience. The moves of these animals follow a certain pattern. They hardly do something unexpected whereas, in a fight against a ninja, the ninja may unexpectedly pull out a new trick. But I have nothing to complain about. My mastery of Taijutsu has increased drastically. I can open gates faster and the gates can last for much longer. I think I will be able to open the seventh gate in few more days. Aizuna clenches his fist and walks around the forest. Burble, burble. This sound, it is the sound of falling water. There is a waterfall nearby. Let me check it out. Maybe I can spot more animals there. Aizuna dashes in the direction of the sound. 90 Shikotsu Forest Part 2 A Slash N, Happy Halloween guys. Burble, burble. Aizuna dashes towards the sound of falling water. Soon, he reaches near the source of the sound and spots a gigantic waterfall. Aizuna gapes at the scenery and immerses in its beauty for a while. The reflection from the sun creates a large rainbow at the top of the waterfall. The fresh breeze flows near the waterfall and he could feel his body getting revitalized near the waterfall. This is nature energy. My body is passively absorbing a little amount of senjutsu energy and is rejuvenating itself. Aizuna inhales deeply and walks toward the waterfall. He cups his hand and collect water from the stream and taste it. Such clear water and the taste is so good. This scenery is so enchanting. It is, it is so. Beautiful, right. Aizuna is interrupted by a sudden feminine voice. He turns around to spot the newcomer. He spots a giant two-tail fox. Aizuna raises his guard and warily looks at the fox and gets ready to engage in a fight. Relax. Calm down, I am not looking for a fight. The fox tries to relax Aizuna. Aizuna relaxes his guard a little and questions the fox. Who are you? Do you have any issues with me? I am Kuromi, one of the natives of the Shikotsu forest. I am a part of the fox clan. The fox introduces herself. Sorry for interrupting you earlier. It wasn't my intention. The fox apologies. I am ordered by Lady Katsuyu to summon you. Lady Katsuyu wants to have a chat with you. The fox informs Aizuna. Oh, so, Katsuyu finally remembered me. I have some questions to ask from her. Lead the way, Aizuna responds to the fox. The fox walks towards one of the cavern passage. Aizuna follows the fox while still on guard. The fox continues to lead him inside the cavern. After a while, they exit out of the cavern in a vast open area. There are no large trees out there, only some vines and shrubs. The size of shrubs and vines easily scaling a two-story or THRES dairy building. Aizuna continues to follow the fox. He spots many slugs slithering around. One of the smaller slugs raises its head and greets Aizuna. Hello. 
Izunakan. It has been a while since we last met. Izuna skeptically looks at the slug which greatly resembles Katsuyu. He activates his Sherry Non and checks its chakra signature. Katsuyu, you are Katsuyu. Hello, Izunakan. How are you doing? Another giant slug greets him. Izuna turns his head and looks at the new slug. You are also Katsuyu. Are both of you her clones or Fisayans? Izuna questions them. No, both of us are Katsuyu. Both the slug reply to Izuna. Then which of you is the real one, or are you suffering from an identity crisis? Izuna remembers a filler episode of Naruto where Naruto's shadow clones held the real Naruto as a hostage. Both of us are real. Both of them reply simultaneously again. Hey, can you take me to the real Katsuyu? I can't quite understand the situation here. Izuna stares around and spots various gigantic versions of Katsuyu. The two-tailed fox nods to him and continues to lead him towards the Katsuyu. They walk for a while and soon reaches near the roots of a gigantic tree. The fox points towards a cave and explains. Lady Katsuyu is inside that cave. My task is over if you want to meet me again, then visit me at Fox Clan. The fox turns around and dashes in a particular direction. Izuna enters the cave and soon spots a massive slug slithering back and forth inside the cave. Katsuyu, you are the real Katsuyu, who was looking for me, right? Izuna questioned the slug. Yes, I am indeed the Katsuyu who was looking for you. The giant slug turns its head and looks at Izuna. It is quite late to say it, but still welcome to Shikotsa Forest Izunakan. The slug welcomes him. Hey, before we start our conversation, I have a question for you. Do you mind answering it? Izuna questioned the slug. Go on. I will try to answer your question. The slug assures him. What's the deal with all these Katsuyu out there? Are they your fish and clones or something? All of them are Katsuyu right? Izuna questions Katsuyu. Oh, that. It is not a secret for the natives of the Shikotsu forest. Actually, all of them are Katsuyu. We share every information with each other, and all of us are linked telepathically to each other. After a certain period, the Katsuyu will undergo binary fission and split into two new Katsuyu. The new Katsuyu will inherit the memories of the old Katsuyu. This way we have survived for a very long time. Katsuyu answers to Izuna. Izuna looks at Katsuyu with a surreal gaze. That's it. That's the secret of Katsuyu. I thought it would be something mind-blowing. But this, I can't put my head around it. It is amazing actually but still, it lacks in compared to my fantasies. Izuna sighs to himself. He questions her again. I placed my teleportation seal on one of your smaller body. When I teleported here, why I appeared so far from your location. Izuna looks at Katsuyu. Izunakan, Shikotsu Forest is isolated from the rest of the world by a space-time barrier. The founder of the Uzumaki clan constructed this barrier. I helped to maintain the barrier around the forest. It is because of this reason that your teleportation formula wasn't able to pick up my coordinates closely. Thus, you were teleported at the outer edge of the forest. Various low-intelligence creatures reside at the outer edge of the forest. Katsuyo continues to explain. Izunakan, we Katsuyo are the protector of the Shikotsu Forest. It is us who take care of the forest and maintains its ecosystem despite it being isolated from the rest of the world. Shikotsu Forest existed way before the era of Rikodo Senin, and I have been maintaining it for such a long period. Over the passage of years, due to continuous fission, I have turned into multiple Katsuyo who help me maintain the forest more efficiently. Many of Katsuyo died through accidents, death in battle, or through various other reasons. Katsuyo explains about her herself. Katsuyo, who was your former summoner? I mean before Tsunade who contracted with you. Izuna asks in curiosity. I was a former summon of Mito Uzumaki and before that, I had summoning contracts with Uzumaki clan members. One Uzumaki clan member helped me once by sealing a berserk creature present in the Shikotsu forest. That battle caused the death of many Katsuyu. Thankfully, the Uzumaki clan member sealed the creature before any major harm was done. It was during that moment when I formed a summoning contract with the Uzumaki clan members. Katsuyu laid a summoning contract in front of Izuna. Izuna opens the scroll and starts to filter through the names of her contractor. Tsunade Senjo, Mito Uzumaki, Ashina Uzumaki. He continues to skim through the name of her previous contractor. After skimming for a while, Izuna stops at the first name on the list. Ken's hero Senju. Izuna looks at the scroll once again. Ken's hero Senju. He looks at Katsuyu and questions her. Lady Katsuyu, who is this Ken's hero Senju? You made a contract with the Uzumaki clan members, right? Then why is a Senju clan member first on your contractor list? Izuna questioned Katsuyu. Oh, that? I guess you are aware of the fact that the Uzumaki clan and Senju clans were relatives, right? Izuna nods to Katsuyu. Ken's hero is the first Uzumaki clan member. You can also call him the founder of the Uzumaki clan. He is the person who sealed the vicious creature and protected the Shikotsu forest a few centuries ago. After he made a summoning contract with me, he founded the Uzumaki clan and separated from the Senju clan. If you are interested in his story, then I will narrate it to you. Izuna nods to her as he gets ready to listen to her tale. I am pretty interested in the story of this Ken's hero Senju. He is the founder of the Uzumaki clan and had a Sinai in his possession. I wonder how he got hold of the Sinai, then listen attentively. Katsuyu starts to narrate the story of the first Uzumaki to Izuna. 91 Sage Training Part 1 A few centuries ago, the shinobi world was engulfed in wars and chaos. There were no proper boundaries of the nation. 
Various clans waged war against each other, either for territory or for resources. The Senju clan was one of the most powerful clans. Senju clan enrolled in a battle against the Uchiha clan, another powerful clan. During those warring periods, the leader of the Senju clan had five offspring. His elder son was talented in combat. The youngest son Ken's hero was quite a dunce. He could not master even any basic ninjutsu. In a battle against Uchiha, three of the brothers fell to the Uchiha clan's genius Tenma Uchiha. Unable to bear the loss of his siblings and to overcome his helplessness, Ken's hero left the Senju clan on a journey to achieve power. It was during this journey, Ken's hero learned Funjutsu. It was during this time, he helped me seal the creature and helped the Shikotsu forest. Katsuya walks out of the cave and leads Aizuna. After walking for a while, they reached in front of a large temple. Katsuyu and Aizuna entered the temple. In the center of the temple, Aizuna spot a gigantic statue of a man. The man had long spiky hairs and a giant scroll is tied to his back. He had two shoulder guards with a Vajra symbol on one of them and a spiral symbol on others. His hands are clasped together, and he is in a battle stance. He is Ken's hero Uzumaki. Ken's hero Senju, to be exact. To pay tribute to him, the summons of Shikotsu Forest constructed a temple and erected his statue. Aizuna looks closely at the statue and notices strange marking all over the statue's body. The markings closely resemble strength of a hundred seal. He turns towards Katsuyu and questions her. Isn't that the strength of a hundred seal? That's Tsunade technique right? Katsuyu nods to him and reply. It is indeed similar to strength of a hundred seal because Tsunade derived her technique from this jutsu. Tsunade's creation rebirth technique is incomplete. Kenshirosama created this technique to use in conjunction with sage mode. Midosama modified the technique to use normal chakra instead of the sage chakra and Tsunade-sama further improved the technique. But now her technique has a side effect. The original technique created by Kenshirosama had strict requirements but it had no side effects. Oh, there was such a thing. Then why don't you help Tsunade-san to learn this original technique? Aizuna questions Katsuyu. I tried to convince Tsunade-san to learn this technique. But it requires lots of time to learn, and tsunade took part in the Second Shinobi War during her youth, and then the loss of her loved ones caused trauma to her. So, she neglected this technique. Katsuyu sighs. I will convince Tsunade to learn this technique. She will heed to my request. You can train Tsunade in this technique. Aizuna assures Katsuyu and inspects the temple. There are various sealing scrolls placed inside the temple. Aizuna picks up one of the scrolls and reads it. Oh, these scrolls have many sealing techniques written on them. These seals are way beyond the Grand Master level. Aizunakan? Kenshirosama created these seals. He was famous as the Sage of Sealing throughout the Shinobi world. He was a very powerful Shinobi, but sadly he lived a brief life. Katsuyu sighs and reminisces about her past. Aizuna's interest peaks and he questions Katsuyu. Lady Katsuyu, how did he die? He was a powerful Shinobi, right? Who was capable of killing him? Katsuyu looks at Aizuna and hesitates for a while before she revealed the fact. It was your ancestor, Tenma Uchiha. Tenma Uchiha awakened the power of Manjikyo Sherinan and fought in a battle against Kenshirosama. Their battle was intense, Tenma Uchiha had the power of Suzano whereas Kenshirosama had sage mode and his various sealing techniques. Their battle lasted for two days and night. Kenshirosama ended the life of Tenma Uchiha. Sadly, Kenshirosama succumbed to his injuries from the battle. It seems like Ken's hero Senju and Tenma Uchiha were the past incarnations of Ashura and Indra at Satsuki. It is their fate to clash in every incarnation. With Black Zetsu behind the scenes, it is impossible to avoid the battle. Aizuna inspect the remaining scrolls and remarks. Ken's hero Azumaki had a very high aptitude for sealing. To gain fame as Sage of Sealing and clash against a Suzano with Funjutsu and Sage mode alone. So, after Grand Master comes the Sage. I hope these scrolls will give me a direction to achieve Sage rank in Funjutsu. He turns towards Katsuyu and asks her. Lady Katsuyu, can you help me in training Sage mode? I want to master Senjutsu and become a Sage. Well, I will help you learn Sage mode, but you have to be compatible with Sage energy to master it. Otherwise, you will turn into stone because of the potent nature energy. Compatibility? I was born with it. I just have to hop in and learn sage mode. Later, I will figure out a way to gain six paths sage mode. Maybe I should contact with Toads and ask that old Toad about Hago Romo at Satsuki. He must have some knowledge about the six paths sage mode. Aizuna makes his plan. Lady Katsuyu, do you have some sort of aid that helps in the acceleration of the learning process? He remembers about the Toad oil of the Mount Mayaboku. We do? It is a slug secretion oil. If you apply it on your body, you can absorb nature energy faster. Katsuyu leads him to a pool filled with white sticky liquid. Ugh, this. Aizuna looks at the slimy liquid and complains. I won't apply it to my body. I will learn the sage mode through normal ways. Aizuna complains. It is your choice, Aizunakan. Katsuyu slithers towards the giant tree in the center of the forest. Aizunakan. The first and the most important thing required to master sage mode is a calm mind. If your mind is calm, then only will you able to concentrate on nature's energy. Nature energy is present everywhere. Our every breath contains nature energy. The chakra system of the body absorbs nature energy and converts it to chakra to replenish the chakra. This way the chakra system acts as a converter. But in this, we lose the potency of nature energy. 
The chakra gains an elemental nature and thus losses its versatility. Nature energy has no elemental nature which makes it more versatile and potent. However, there is a catch here. Since it has no elemental nature, it is very hard to sense. And the excessive intake of nature energy will convert a person to stone, since nature energy has the will of the planet. Now, do you have any more questions? If not, then we will start with meditation. Remove all excessive thoughts from your mind and focus on sensing nature energy. Katsuyu instructs Aizuna and helps him in concentrating. Ah, uh, Lady Katsuyu. I used to meditate a lot to calm my nerves. I can easily enter the mind zero state. Can we move on to the next stage of the training? If it is so let's move on to the sensing of nature energy. Katsuyu looks at Aizuna with disbelief. Her optical tentacles shake frantically. Aizunakan, you have to enter in the meditation state and try to sense the nature energy around you. You are a sensor type ninja, right? It will be easier for you to sense nature energy. Just concentrate and feel the nature energy. This giant tree releases an enormous amount of nature energy. It is part of the reason I brought you under this tree. You will be able to sense nature energy easily here. But if you are having difficulty in sensing the nature energy, then you can always apply the slug oil and passively absorb the nature energy and get a feel of the nature energy. Katsuyu points towards the slug oil pool. Anything, but that. I will figure out a way to sense nature energy on my own. Aizuna crosses his hand in denial. Well, if you say so, I will stay here and monitor your progress. I will prevent you from turning into stone in case you absorb excessive nature energy. Katsuyu slithers to a nearby boulder and rests against it. Aizuna closes his eyes and enters the mediation state. Let me try to feel nature energy with my body first. 92 Sage Training Part 2 Aizuna closes his eyes and feels the nature energy. After meditating for a while, he feels a tingling sensation over his skin. His body absorbs nature energy at a slow pace. I can sense the nature energy but the rate of absorption is quite slow. It will take me a while to absorb it at a rapid pace. I have to practice a lot in order to absorb nature energy. Now let's try the unusual method. Aizuna activates his sherry non and observes the entire process. He can see nature energy entering his body through his tenkutsu points. So, this is nature energy. Aizuna looks around and spots an enormous amount of nature energy being released by the gigantic tree. Let me try to absorb this energy directly. He calms his mind and focuses his concentration on nature energy. He releases his chakra from his tenkutsu points. The released chakra wraps around nature energy and tries to pull it inside his body. Heavy? It feels so heavy. I can feel the will of the planet inside this nature energy. I have to contest with the planet for this energy. Aizuna clenches his teeth and releases more of his chakra to drag the natural energy. He drags the natural energy inside his body. He gains a cyan color chakra cloak around his body. So, this is nature energy. I can feel my body rejuvenating from this energy. My physical strength had grown quite a lot. It feels like I can easily punch a large hole through that earlier tree quite easily now. Aizuna clenches his fist and punches the air with full force. Boom. His punch produces shock waves. The sin seal activates and absorbs the nature energy, leaving Aizuna out of the sage mode. Wow, Aizunakan, that was amazing. The optical tentacles of Katsuyu shake in excitement. You could enter the sage mode for a while, though only for a brief moment. But that was the genuine sage mode. You are a genius, Aizunakan. At this rate, you will perfectly master the sage mode in a few weeks. Katsuyu praises Aizuna. The cloak around him disperses and Aizuna returns to normal. And it's gone? This fucking seal. It has to eat everything like a snack. It ate my chakra for three years, I finally got rid of that problem with Yinkarema. But now it is sucking my natural energy. Just you wait, I will see how you will drain me again. Aizuna infuses light chakra and mixes it with natural energy. The sin seal stops on contact with light chakra and lies down silently. In these three years, he had figured out more about the sin seal. This is quite a gluttonous seal, it will continuously suck chakra from Yinkarema and will occasionally stop when it is full. He can still use that stored chakra, but only in the form of darkness chakra, Funjutsu seal, and for a dark Suzano. So, this seal embodies darkness. It will repel anything related to light. Part of the reason, it stops its mischief when given a dose of light chakra. I still can't recreate that jutsu. Aizuna remembers the jutsu he used against that cloaked figure. I can't balance the light and dark chakra to replicate that feat both of them repel each other, and I haven't figured out a way to balance them. I am missing something crucial in the process. Aizuna sighs and closes his eyes to concentrate again. Still, there is one benefit of this seal. It won't allow me to turn into a stone while absorbing excessive nature energy. It will suck that extra nature energy and keep me safe. I want to get rid of this love and hate relationship with this seal. Now let's practice in the usual way. I will use the other method only during emergencies to immediately get into sage mode. I have to still learn the normal process, then only will I able to learn the secrets of the six paths sage mode. Time to use the most broken jutsu to speed up the process. Shadow clone jutsu. Aizuna creates three shadow clones. The clones sit around the tree and enter into meditation. What are you doing, Aizunakan? Why are you making shadow clones? Katsuyu looks at Aizuna in surprise. There is no harm in telling her. She can't exploit the shadow clone herself. Lady Katsuyu, I am using shadow clones to hasten up the process of learning the sage mode. 
Whenever a shadow clone disperses, it transfers all of its memories and experience to the original body. This way, I can cut short on time and learn many things simultaneously. But there is a drawback to this trick, many clones when dispelled will cause an information overload in the user's brain. This is the reason why I am only using three shadow clones to speed up the process by three times. Any more than that will break my concentration. So, I have to be careful while using this technique. Aizuna explains to Katsuyu. That's quite convenient, Aizunakan. You can continue your practice, I will continue to monitor your progress. Katsuyu rests against the boulder while shaking its optical antlers. Aizuna continues to practice the sage mode. He practices the sage mode for a few days. I guess I have got a hang of it, but I am yet to completely master the sage mode. Guess I have to raise the difficulty by a notch. Aizuna climbs up on the large tree. After reaching a spot where the wind current is quick, Aizuna stops and concentrates again. There is quite the pressure here. These wind currents will harass me and will disrupt my concentration. If I can enter and maintain sage mode under such conditions then I would have perfectly mastered the sage mode. The next step would be to enter the sage mode while running. Naruto wasn't able to figure that out, but I will give it a shot. If I can enter the sage mode while running, then I will able to enter sage mode during combat. The next step is to just create the sage arts jutsu. I will think about that later. He closes his eyes to sense the nature energy while sitting on one branch of the tree. Hard, it is quite hard. But I have to hold on. Soon, Aizuna enters in a meditative state, and his body absorbs the natural energy. A while later, a cyan-colored cloak appears on his body. The cloak flickers as Aizuna struggle to maintain his concentration. Ha, huff, huff. The cloak disperses, and he pants. I have to practice again. He clears his mind and enters in concentration again. Katsuyu looks at his figure and murmurs to herself. He is progressing much faster than anyone else. Even Hashirama Senjisama could not progress this much in such a short period. His sage mode is quite different compared to others. He has a chakra cloak around his body. Hashirama Senjisama had markings reminiscent of Ken's hero Senjisama, but his sage mode is quite different. Days passed by. Aizuna had perfectly mastered the sage mode. While in sage mode, he has a cyan color nature energy chakra cloak around his body. His eyes had golden and silver markings around them, and his sherinan keeps its color. I can sense this tremendous boost in power. Somehow, my sage mode is quite similar to Mitsuki. But I don't have a horn on my head and I retain my form. I do have a perfect affinity for all kinds of energy. Time to test my powers. Let's start with my speed while using nature energy. Swift release, sonic steps. Zoom. Aizuna crashes into a boulder. He stands up and dusts himself. That was quite fast. I never expected it to be so fast. I didn't even felt a thing in that collision. My durability and natural defense have increased by a lot. Then what about my strength? How strong am I? Aizuna lifts a large boulder easily and throws it far away. The boulder smash into a hill and lodges into it. Impressive. Your strength is impressive, Aizunakan. Katsuyu praises Aizuna. Now it is time to enter sage mode while running. If I can overcome this challenge, then I don't have to worry about anything. I can fight tirelessly for many days without exhaustion. Nature energy will rejuvenate my body with vitality. Aizuna runs around while trying to concentrate. His clones follow his movements and try to enter sage mode. It is quite difficult and borderline impossible. I have to think of a solution for this to work. Aizuna stops and ponders on this problem. 93 Mount Mayaboku Huff, Huff. Guess I will leave it as a work in progress. Aizuna huffs and wipes his sweat. I have spent an entire month to figure out a way to enter sage mode while engaged in combat. But it is very difficult and I am going insane with this slow progress. Aizuna sits near the root of the giant tree and contemplates his progress. I have spent the past six months of training in the Shikotsu forest. My strength has grown considerably. I can open and sustain the seventh gate for a while, and the biggest progress is sage mode. I can enter sage mode in just under two minutes and it lasts for 15 minutes. But I still can't enter sage mode while battling. Looks like I have to visit Toads for more information. Maybe they could help me with this problem. Aizuna stands up and walks towards Katsuyo. He bows to her in gratitude. Thanks for your help, Lady Katsuyo. You helped me a lot in my sage mode training. Thanks to your pointers, I could learn and perfect my sage mode so quickly. There is no need to thank me, Aizunakan. It was all your hard work and talent which lead to your success. Katsuyo shakes her optical tentacles. What are your plans, Aizunakan? She asks him curiously. I would like to pay a visit to Mount Mayaboku. Those toads are also the master of sage mode. I want to enter sage mode while engaged in combat. Maybe their pointers could help me improve further. Aizuna replies to her. Then, Aizunakan, I would like to ask a favor from you. Can you convince Tsunade to visit Shikotsu Forest? It would be great if she could learn the sage mode. Her strength is declining with her age. I have a feeling the future is embroiled in chaos and I don't want Tsunade to lack strength. Katsuya requests to Aizuna. I will convince her and send her here. She is taking care of Naruto for now. I will send her immediately in a few more months when she leaves Kanaha on a journey. Until then, farewell Lady Katsuyu. That's a relief to hear. I hope Tsunade will master sage mode too. On behalf of Tsunade, I thank you for taking care of her. Katsuyu bows and her optical tentacles shake. Farewell Aizunakan. 
Aizuna closes his eyes and senses the space coordinates of his markings on the toad summons of Jiraiya. Found it. Time to leave. Aizuna teleports from Shikotsu Forest and reappears inside the Mount Mayaboku. He is welcomed by the sight of various small waterfalls and streams flowing around. The air is fresh and there is a lot of sunlight in the area. This beautiful and exquisite sight enchants him, and he stores it deep into his memories. Mount Mayaboko has a fresh air compared to Shikotsu Forest. Shikotsu Forest was dark and humid whereas this place has lots of sunlight and has a freshness to it. Both places have their own merits. Aizuna takes a deep breath and continues to frame the vast expanse of small hills and various strange trees and shrubs in his memory. Croak. Oi kid. The sound of the croaking of a frog disturbs this peaceful scenery. Aizuna ignores the croaking and continues to gaze at the scenic beauty of Mount Mayaboku. Croak. Croak. Oi kid. Don't test my patience. Answer to me. The frog croaks again. Damn. This frog is ruining the beauty of nature for me. Aizuna turns around and angrily stares at Gamabunta. Can't you see? I am busy, you rusty frog. He yells at Gamabunta. Kid, I should be the one to get angry. You entered our territory without my permission, and now you are bossing me around. Don't you know who I am? I am the chief toad of Mount Mayaboka, the land of toads. That kid Minato never taught you any manners. Gamabunta angrily stares at Aizuna. I will teach humbleness to you. Gamabunta withdraws his die blade and gets ready to slash Aizuna. Stop it, you moron. He is a guest of our Mount Mayaboku. Few people can reach here, and it has been a while since we had a visitor. A small green frog with white hair styled in mohawk, thick eyebrows, and a small goatee jumps in front of us. He held a stick in his hand. The frog jumps up and slams the stick on the giant frog's head. The stick looks like a toothpick in front of the massive size of Gamabunta. Bang. The impact from the stick smashes Gamabunta on the ground and creates a crater around him. Go back to your training. Don't dilly-dally around. Gamabunta rubs his forehead and complains. But pa? He is an intruder, and he talked rudely to me. I must teach this sharp-tongued kid a lesson. The green frog glares at Gamabunta with a scrutinizing gaze. Gamabunta picks up his blade and hops away from the place. The green frog turns towards Aizuna and greets him. Welcome Aizuna boy, I have been expecting you for a while. The great toad sage had already prophesied about your arrival. I am Fukazaku, one of the two great toad sage of Mount Mayaboku. Me and my wife Shima are the heirs of the great toad sage. The great toad sage wants to meet you. He has a prophecy for you. Fukazaku informs Aizuna. There is no harm in meeting with Great Toad Sage this early. My goal was to ask a few questions from him. But he wants to meet me. This makes things a lot easier. I am Aizuna Uchiha. It is nice to meet you. Aizuna bows before Fukazaku. I know about you, kid. Jiraiya boy informed me about you. You were one of the student of Minotoboy. Sadly, Minotoboy passed away too early. Fukazaku sighs in grief. Let me take you to meet with Great Toad Sage. Fukazaku leads Aizuna towards a temple. Many toad statues line up in front of the temple. They reach near the entrance and Fukazaku stops. Let me inform Great Toad Sage about your arrival. Fukazaku enters inside the temple. Aizuna observes the surrounding area. He can see many gigantic toad statues lines around. A few meters away, he notices a small pool of oil with many gigantic stone statues of toads encircling the area. So, this is the legendary toad oil of Mount Mayaboko. It helps in the absorption of nature energy. The image of slimy white liquid appears in his mind, and he almost pukes out his breakfast. Thankfully, I don't have to use that slug oil to master sage mode. After a while, Fukazaku returns with a disappointed expression. He sighs and informs Aizuna. Great Toad Sage is deep in his meditation. It will be a while before he wakes up from his meditation. Why don't you spend these days in Mount Mayaboku? I will teach the sage mode to you. It will help you a lot in your shinobi journey. Aizuna closes his eyes and absorbs nature energy. Fukazaku stares at Aizuna with wide eyes. A cyan color cloak appears around Aizuna, and golden and silver markings appear around his eyes. He turns towards Fukazaku and replies, I have already mastered the sage mode. Fukazaku inspects Aizuna's chakra cloak and murmurs to himself, This is a strange variation of sage mode. I have never heard or seen anything like this. This large density of nature energy and those markings around his eyes. It is a perfect sage mode. Not even Jiraiya boy can enter the perfect sage mode. This kid is talented in senjutsu. Fukazaku muses for a while before he responds, I am surprised to see your talent in senjutsu, Aizuna boy. I will teach frog kata to you. Only those who have mastered the sage mode can learn the frog kata. It is an exclusive technique available only to senjutsu users. The great toad sage created this technique and passed it to us. Are you interested in learning this technique? Frog kata is an excellent technique. I must learn it. Aizuna nods his head. Yes, teach me frog kata, Fukazakuzen. Don't be so formal, Aizuna boy. Call me pa like the rest of the people. It is decided then, I will teach you frog kata until great toad sage wakes up from his meditation. Fukazaka clasps his hand and enters sage mode. He explains about frog kata to Aizuna. Aizuna boy, frog kata is a taijutsu technique exclusive to sages. The senjutsu chakra activates the body in various ways, enhancing the speed, reflexes, strength, stamina, and durability of the user. 
This allows the user to perform incredible feats like leaping great distances, shattering sharp materials with bare hands, and lift objects several times their size and weight. Few Kazaka jumps around and showcases the enhanced strength of Sage Mode. To properly use this enhanced strength in combat, we require Frog Kata. The user can create an aura of natural energy around their body and use it to attack their enemies. The aura acts as the extension of one's body and only other Sage Mode users can see it. This makes the attack caused by Frog Kata to appear invisible to others. Few Kazaka clenches his fist and punches a boulder. He held his fist a few centimeters away from the boulder. Crack. A crack appears on the boulder and it shatters from the attack. 94 Prophecy of Great Toad Sage That's how you do it, Izuna boy. Few Kazaka demonstrates Frog Kata to Izuna. Izuna clenches his fist and stands in front of a boulder. He punches the boulder and stops a few centimeters away from the boulder. Some slight cracks appear on the boulder, but it holds itself. I need some practice to master it completely. This. Izuna boy. How did you do this? You could utilize Frog Kata to such an extent on your first observation. It flabbergasts Few Kazaku. Izuna turns around and shows his Sherry Non to Few Kazaku. Remember? I am an Uchiha. My Sherry Non can see through all kinds of jutsus, no matter what it is. I used the Eye of Insight of Sherry Non to copy the jutsu. But it seems like I have to practice a little to master Frog Kata. That's convenient, Izuna boy. Jiraiya boy took so long to learn Frog Kata, and even his Sage Mode is imperfect. Minotoboy was able to learn the perfect Sage Mode, but his fighting style didn't match with the Sage Mode. So, Minotoboy neglected the Sage Mode. You are impressive Izuna boy. You mastered the Sage Mode and its Teijutsu technique at such a young age. There hasn't been a genius like you to visit Mount Mayaboku in a while. Few Kazaku points at various stone statues and remarks. All of these statues were human once. Most of them were one of a kind genius. They were able to successfully able to travel through the secret path and visit Mount Mayaboku. But sadly, none of them achieved the perfect sage mode, and in their desperate attempts, they turned into a stone statue. Few Kazaku sighs and continues. I will give pointers to you. Follow my instructions and you will master Frog Kata in a few days. Thus, another intense session of sage Teijutsu starts for Izuna. After a week, Izuna punches a boulder from a few inches away and the boulder blows into smithereens. Looks like you have completely mastered the Frog Kata. Your rate of progress is amazing, Izuna boy. It's time to meet Great Toad Sage. He has summoned us. Few Kazaku leads the way to Great Toad Sage's residence. Izuna follows Few Kazaku and enters inside the temple. A giant brown toad with a white belly appears in his vision. The toad's skin is wrinkled, and the toad is squinting to gain's vision. The toad wore a professor's hat with tassels and an orb on top of it. He also wears a necklace around his neck with a giant bead with oil in kanji written on it. There are giant scrolls lined behind him and the toad sits in a shallow pool of water with the kanji sage inscribed on it. So, he is the great toad sage Gamamaru. He has lived for a thousand years and was born way before the arrival of Kagaya. I am already aware of this fact, but the actual thing is more like a living fossil. Izuna examines the great toad sage Gamamaru. Few Kazaku bows before Gamamaru and informs him. Ajiji-sama, the one you summoned has arrived as you predicted. The great toad sage gestures for Izuna to get near him. I was expecting your arrival, Izuna Uchiha. I have divined the future, and it involves you in lots of events. So, I divined about your future and got some information. I have a prophecy for you. Hear me out. Izuna perks up his ear to listen to the prophecy. This old frog's prophecies are quite accurate. Maybe he can give me a clue or two about the sin seal. Boy, I can see danger looming over your family in near future. You will fight against lots of powerful enemies in the future, and I can see a giant pillar linked with chains. The great toad sage turns silent for a while and meditate. That's it. I can only say this much. For some odd reasons, your future is hazy and I can't peek much into your future. Now, if you have any questions, I will listen to them. Izuna contemplates for a while. I could ask about six path sage mode from him. Maybe he can lead me in a certain direction. It is decided then. Ah, uh, I would like to have a private conversation with Ajijisama, if it is fine with him. The great toad sage gestures to few Kazaku and nearby toads to leave the temple. After all of them exits the temple, he turns towards Izuna and replies, I am aware of your problems. I have already divined about them. I will answer them for you. Izuna is surprised to hear this, his surprise turns to excitement, and he anxiously looks at Gamamaru. Don't be too hasty, boy. Everything moves at its own pace. Now for your questions, I will first narrate the details of Rakudu Senin to you. The great toad sage closes his eyes and narrates the event. You must be aware of the details of the fight between Rakudu Senin and the Tendales. He fought against the Tendales and sealed it inside himself, thus becoming the first Jinchuriki to exist ever. After becoming the Jinchuriki of Tendales, he gained godlike powers. He manifested truth-seeking orbs the ultimate manifestation of all nature transformations through the use of yin-yang release. As the Jinchuriki of Tendales, his Senjutsu was enhanced to its peak, and he named it Six Paths Senjutsu. However, sometime before the end of his lifespan, Hajo Romo separated the Tendales from his body and sealed its body inside the moon. He extracted its chakra and formed the nine-tailed beasts you know today. As a result, Hajo Romo lots all of his powers and the Six Paths Sage Mode. 
However, Hago Romo wielded Rinnegan in his eyes. His ocular power allowed him to remaster and reinvent the Six Paths Sage mode. He mastered all nature transformations from scratch and finally gained access to truth-seeking orbs. Thus, by mastering all the nature transformations and finally shaping them into truth-seeking orbs Hago Romo gained Six Paths Sage mode again. Hago Romo was the Jinchuriki of Tentails and he had Rinnegan to help him with nature transformations. With his prior experience, it wasn't a difficult feat for him. But, Izunaboy, you on other hand don't possess any of those things. The journey to gain Six Paths Sage mode will be extremely hard for you. The Great Toad Sage explained everything to Izuna. Izuna exits from the table and muses over Gamamara's words. So, to gain Six Paths Sage mode, I have to master all nature transformation and create a Kekai Mora. Only then will I able to create my truth-seeking balls and enter in Sage mode. Izuna starts to ponder over Six Paths Sage mode. Naruto exhausted every last bit of chakra in his fight against Suzuki, thus effectively losing all of Hagoromo's chakra, but he later regained the Six Paths Sage mode though he permanently lost the truth-seeking balls. Maybe it has something to do with the chakra of all tailed beast. Hago Romo was a Jinchuriki of Tentails and Naruto was a Sudo Jinchuriki. Do I have to steal chakra from every tailed beast to enter Six Paths Sage mode? That's a lot of work. I will try to figure out another way to enter the Sage mode. Aizuna stares at the Sin Seal and contemplates a little. Maybe who knows this nasty seal can help me. Though it is unreliable, it has saved my ass in some thorny situations. But I won't leave everything to it, I will start the nature transformation training first. A while later, Fu Kazaku enters the temple and bows in front of Great Toad Sage. Ajijisama, is he the child of prophecy, the savior of mankind? Fu Kazaku questions the Great Toad Sage. The Great Toad Sage shakes his head and replies, no, he is not. He is more like the guardian of the world than its protector. Fu Kazaku tilts his head in confusion and questions, what's the difference between them? Aren't they the same? Great Toad Sage shakes his head and replies, No, there is a difference. The Savior will protect the world from its dangers, whereas the Guardian will defend the world from other worldly threats. It is no use talking about it now, you will understand in the future. Just keep in mind, maintain a friendly relationship with the boy, guide him to the correct path. You can leave now, I need to enter my meditation. Great Toad Sage dismisses Fu Kazaku, this grumpy old senile geezer. All he does is sleep. At least, give me a proper explanation. Fu Kazaku complains to himself and exits from the temple. He spots Aizuna sitting on a boulder. Fu Kazaku hops towards Aizuna. Aizuna boy, I will help with your nature transformation training. We toads have some ancient scrolls passed down as heritage. These scrolls existed way before the Rakudu Senin. Oh, that seems intriguing. Aizuna's interest is piqued after listening about the origin of the scrolls. 95 Origin of Senjutsu This seems pretty intriguing. Aizuna curiously looks at the stack of scrolls laid in front of him. I always wondered how these bunch of toads gained wisdom and the power to wield Senjutsu. Chakra is a power exclusive to its kiss. Hago Romo was born with Chakra because of Kagaya. Later he shared his Chakra with the rest of beings through the use of Ninshu. Chakra became a privilege accessible to all living beings on Shinobi world. But Senjutsu was present way before Chakra, since Gamamaru trained Hago Romo in Senjutsu. Now, here is the question. How come these toads came to know about Senjutsu? Maybe these scrolls might answer my doubts. Aizuna grabbed a scroll to read it. This is. The writing of the scroll surprises him. These markings? They are similar to the one present in Grimoire of Sin. Is it a coincidence of some kind? Aizuna turns towards Fu Kazaku and questions him. Fu Kazakuzen, where did you get these scrolls? I have never seen this writing anywhere. They look so ancient and I can sense a vast amount of nature energy in them. Fu Kazaku contemplates for a while before he replies. Aizuna boy, these scrolls are a heritage of us frogs. Many millennia ago, one of our ancestors saved the life of a certain person. The person was seriously injured and was on the verge of death. At that time, there was no concept of chakra or senjutsu. The ancestor together with other animals nursed him back to health. It was that person who taught us the concept of senjutsu and trained our ancestors in senjutsu together with other animals. He created Mount Mayaboku, Shikotsu Forest, and the Ryuka Cave. These places later turned into the sage regions of the shinobi world. These scrolls were written by him to pass to his inheritor. Though I am still unaware of his possession which he passed down. Even Great Toad Sage doesn't know much about this. There is no record of that person's information in the remains of history. As far as I know, he fought against some otherworldly invaders and died in the battle. There are still some ruins of their battle spread throughout the shinobi world, though the exact location of these ruins is unknown. This is the information passed down by our ancestors. Fu Kazaku explains to Aizuna. Really, there was such a backstory. If I remember correctly, none of the Atsutsuki demonstrated Senjutsu in any battle. Well, their chakra is potent enough on its own. Like literally, they can reincarnate themselves through the use of Kama seals. Also, they convert the entire life energy and nature energy of the planet into fruit and harvest it. So why do they even need Senjutsu? This can only mean one thing, Senjutsu is a power not inherited from the Atsutsuki clan but its source is the same as this Sin Seal. The person whom I fought against wasn't an Atsutsuki, he utilized a power similar to this Sin Seal and he didn't have any sort of Dojutsu. 
Now, if he is like a Tsutsukis, then I highly doubt I killed him during our previous encounter. So who is he? Why was he after the Sin Seal? And most of all, what is the origin of Senjutsu and Funjutsu? The gears in Aizuna's brain churned and various questions popped up in his mind. Let me see the content of this scroll first. Maybe they could answer some of my questions. Aizuna opens the scroll and activates his Sherinan to decipher it. He looks at the scroll's content again but couldn't decipher it. I have to use my Manjikyo Sherinan to decipher it. He turns towards Fukazaku and informs him. I will borrow these scrolls for a while. I think I will be able to decipher them. You can do as you please, Aizuna boy. I will return. Ma would be waiting for me. Fukazaku hops away from the spot. Aizuna teleports from his spot. He reappears at the top of the giant tree in Shikotsu Forest. Let me try to decipher it now. He activates his Manjikyo Sherinan and inspects the scroll again. Welp, I still can't read it. The Sin Seal reacts again and forms strange markings around his right eye. The contents of the scroll reveal itself to him as some information pops out in his brain. Day 27. It has been a while since I got stranded in this dimension. There are various inferior creatures in this dimension. They can't utilize any sort of energy, and their mortality rate is very high. A bunch of low-level animals saved me, and I feel thankful to them. Well, not really, but still, they saved my life. The fight with the Atsutsuki clan members left me with many serious injuries. I have to open a Yamatsu Hirasaka to escape from the chase of Atsutsuki clan members. But they were prepared. They even brought Karasuki and Hirasuki to chase me down. The time and space artifacts helped them chase me down to this dimension. It requires lots of energy to travel freely through dimensions, but thankfully our clan techniques are oriented towards space-time and ceiling. These Atsutsuki spent lots of their chakra to travel through space and time. It will be a while before they recover and search for me. I have to get help from natives of this dimension. Sigh, again, these animals have very low intelligence. I should teach them one of my clan's techniques. Maybe these animals could gather their surrounding energy and attain some spiritual wisdom. I need help while dealing with those Atsutsukis, and even if it is a little, it will suffice. So, I trained them in Senjutsu arts, the energy utilizing technique of our clan. Atsutsukis are born with chakra and thus they have a natural advantage against us, but their nefarious ways of gaining power didn't sit well with us. Sigh, I am caught in such a difficult situation. The writing on the scroll ends. Aizuna rolls the scroll and contemplates. This scroll is nothing more than a diary, but it seems like I will get all of my answers in them. So, my hunch was correct. Somebody taught these toads, slugs, and other summons. And from the looks of it, he was chased down by Atsutsuki clan members. Man, these Atsutsukis are present everywhere. I always wondered how Kagaya had enough time to create some ruins in the Shinobi world when she was busy with her peaceful world quest. Looks like Atsutsuki visited Shinobi world earlier on an expedition to hunt this guy down. They even took the time artifact Karasuki with them. Aizuna takes out a piece of strange metal in his hand. If my guess is correct, then this broken artifact of the Namikaze clan is Hirasuki, as mentioned in this diary scroll. Maybe it broke during their final confrontation and during later years Namikaze clan chanced upon it. But to think, there are other races out there who are as equally powerful as Atsutsukis. Looks like I am born in an alternate or parallel Naruto world. I have to make preparations for this new danger too. There are other powerful beings out there with their sight on Shinobi world. I need as many helping hands as possible. I have to talk with Tsunade regarding her sage mode training. She will be a great asset in the future. I have to pay a visit to the village and check on Shisui and attack it too. It has been a year since I left the village. I only briefly returned to the village just to show my face to mom. All this training had exhausted me mentally, I have to take a break and in the meantime convinced Tsunade too. Aizuna stows away the scroll and jumps down from the tree. He senses the chakra of Katsuyu and moves towards her. Lady Katsuyu, I will fulfill my promise now. In a few more days, I will bring Tsunade to Shikotsu Forest for sage mode training. Thank you so much, Aizunakan. I will be able to keep the legacy of Kenshirosama alive this way. His clan got annihilated a few years ago, but thankfully I will be able to pass his legacy to Tsunade. Only if that girl Tsunade found a mate and birthed a child. Sigh. Katsuyu sighs and her optical tentacles twirls around. Farewell, Lady Katsuyu. Aizuna teleports away from Shikotsu Forest. If only you were a bit older, Aizunakan. Then it would have worked out. Katsuyu sighs again and looks towards the temple. 96 back to Kanaha Aizuna appears on top of the Hokage Monument. He looks around and inspects the village. The air is a bit chilly here. I can see the tension in the village. I guess Uchiha's dissatisfaction is apparent to the villagers. I will pay a visit to mom and dad and then I will talk with Tsunade. I will look upon Itake and Shisui too, they would have progressed a lot this year. Aizuna disappears from the Hokage's monument and reappear outside the Uchiha clan. Inside the Hokage's office, Hiruzen stares at Hokage monuments and murmurs. Tobirama sensei, it has been a while since Danzo disappeared from the village. My suspicion is, he died in a battle, but I am not aware of the culprit. There are no clues or traces of Danzo anywhere. Even the root shinobis have no information on this matter. All of them were trapped in a powerful genjutsu. I suspect the culprit is the same person who attacked the village during the Nine Tails incident. But Danzo had done plenty of dirty deeds and schemes, and I unknowingly supported him. I am not a competent leader. 
If only I could notice it earlier. Here is in size and looks at the report. Recently, there have been increased reports and complaints from civilians regarding the mistreatment by Uchiha police force. The Uchiha police officers continue to harass civilians and shopkeepers. They even had some skirmishes with Umbu and caused some mutual damage. Here is in size and places down the scroll. In an underground hideout. Achu, Obito sneezes and looks around. It's a bit chilly here. He stands up and walks towards Black Zetsu. It's time to start the next phase of our plan. We failed to capture the Nine Tails in the previous attempt. Our strength is not enough to collect all the Nine Tailed Beasts together. Kanaha has various powerful shinobi. Obito looks at the pinned pictures of Hiruzen, Sakumo, Jiraiya, Tsunade, Orokimura, Fugaku, Minato, Kushina, Hayashi, and Izuna. There is a cross on Minato, Kushina, and Orokimura's pictures. We can deal with the rest of them. Nagato's six paths of pain are sufficient for them, but our major concern lies with Izuna Uchiha. Obito stabs a kunao in Izuna's picture. He is way too strong for us to handle. Even Nagato with his Rinnegan was struggling against this monster. He is a Genjutsu, Kenjutsu, Ninjutsu, Shurikenjutsu, and even Fuinjutsu master. He doesn't have any weakness. Maybe except for his family members. Obito contemplates on the matter. He turns towards Black Zetsu and speaks. It is time for you to officially join the Akatsuki. We need to recruit more members for our plan to succeed. I will discuss our plans with Pain. I will infiltrate Hidden Mist Village and will seek a way to gain control of the fourth Mizu Cage. Their Mizu Cage is quite young, and he is a Jinchuriki as well. We need resources to support Akatsuki and initiate the next step of our plan. I will control Hidden Mist and gain funds for our operations. Obito swirls out of the hideout. Black Zetsu looks at the disappearing figure of Obito and thinks. Mother, I am one more step closer to your revival. All chakra shall be reunited again and form the chakra tree. That foolish H.A.G.O. Romo distributed the chakra to mankind and wasted it. But I will soon reunite it. Mother shall see this world once again. All chakra shall return to its original owner. Black Zetsu enters the ground and moves out from the hideout. Izuna enters inside the Uchiha compound and strolls in the market. He observes the passerby and notices a lack of non-Uchiha citizens. The Uchihas are isolating themselves. Even the Uchiha police force appears to be cold and distant. I suppose Fugaku is pressured by those old geezers of the clan. After Granduncle passed away, there is no one to keep them under tabs. It was their ambition paired with Danzo's manipulation, which leads to the downfall of the Uchiha clan. I have dealt with Danzo, but these old senile geezers are still persistent. I don't want to step in early to involve in the conflict as it is too much of a pain in the ass and the ambitions of these old geezers will only increase. But I won't allow the mindless slaughter of the clan. If Obito touches my family, I will end him. I don't care about the future. I am a selfish person and I don't have any thoughts regarding other Uchiha clan members, but my parents are my bottom line. He enters his house, and his mother greets him. Izuna dear, it has been a while since you last showed up. Mother missed you a lot. You will be a big brother soon. Are you happy about it? Izuna tilts his head and questioningly looked at Aiko. Mother, but your womb. He points towards Aiko's stomach. Oh, that? We followed Tsunadison's procedure, and your aunt Fumiko agreed to be the adoptive mother of our child. She is two months pregnant now and soon you and Shisui will become a big brother. Wow, that's great. I can't wait for my sibling to be born. I want a cute little sister. Izuna smiles in happiness. So, Tsunade succeeded in the procedure. That's a genius for you. I have to thank her for her hard work. I will gift the expensive honey wine from the land of honey to her. I got it during one of my umbu missions and I preserved it in one of my scrolls. Where is father? Izuna looks around and notices the absence of Akira. There is an important clan meeting held in the Naka Shrine. Your father is attending the meeting. I am not sure of the issue, but it is regarding the attitude of higher-ups of the village against the Uchiha clan. This politics and all, I don't want to be a part of it. I will cook your favorite dish tonight. Aiko enters the kitchen. Guess I will check up on Shisui, Itake, Suzuki, and Naruto. I haven't seen their progress in a while. Izuna closes his eyes and enters semisage mode. He senses the chakra of Shisui and the rest of them. There you are, Uchiha training ground 5. Big brother will like to see your progress. Izuna walks out of his house and flickers towards the training ground. He reaches inside the training ground within seconds. Izuna hides his presence and eavesdrops on them. Shisui is training Naruto whereas Itake is training Suzuki. Narutaken? You have large amounts of chakra. I haven't seen such amounts of chakra in any shinobi except for Big Brother Izuna. His chakra reserves are vast, but for some unknown reasons, Big Brother was always low on chakra. Maybe he was working on another of his new techniques, which consumed an enormous amount of chakra. Anyway, my point is you have terrible chakra control because of your large reserves. I have taught you shurikenjutsu, some simple wind jutsus, and basic teijutsu in this past year. Now, it is time to train your chakra control. If you have a good chakra control, you will be able to use several jutsu using the same amount of chakra. Naruto tilts his head in confusion and questions Shisui. Big brother Shisui, that's quite complicated. I don't quite get it. I hate complicated stuff. Can you explain it in simple terms? Databia. Shisui thinks for a while before he replies. Naruto, consider your body as a bowl of ramen. Your chakra is the broth of ramen. Now your body has lots of broth. 
I mean chakra in it, which means your bowl is bigger than the rest of people. But isn't it a good thing? I have a larger bowl, then I will get to eat more ramen. Databia. Naruto licks his tongue. It is a good thing, but there is a catch to it. Naruto imagines if your ramen has lots of broth, but there are fewer noodles in your bowl. Will you like your ramen? Shisui questions Naruto. No, I want more noodles in my ramen. Databia. Naruto complains. Exactly, that extra broth in your body. I mean chakra is wasted. To fully enjoy the extra broth, you need extra noodles and toppings. Such is the case with you, to make use of that extra chakra and to not waste it, you need more noodles. I mean more chakra control. Then, only will you be able to enjoy your ramen. I mean you will efficiently use your chakra. Shisui holds his breath and stares at Naruto. Do you understand, Naruto? Yes, I understand a little. Next time, I will ask old man Tuka to add more noodles in my ramen. Naruto nods to Shisui. Damn. Shisui clutches his head. Haha. <laughs> Aizuna chuckles and shakes his head. This Naruto, he only cares about ramen. I have to step in. Shisui must be going insane in this past year. Standard training can't teach Naruto, he requires specialized training. Let me take a look at Suzuki's progress. He is smarter among the duo. I don't think he would face any difficulty with the training. Aizuna turns towards Suzuki and Itaki. 97 Spar Itaki is training Suzuki in Shurikenjutsu. There are a bunch of target places around them. Itaka picks up a bunch of kunaus and tosses them up in the air. He draws more kunaus from his holster and throws them at the previous kunaus. The kunaus change their trajectory and hit the target. Look at the movement of my hand and the trajectory of kunaus. Once your observation skills are good enough, you can perform the same feat as me. Itaki reminds Suzuki. Suzuki looks at Itaki with disinterest. Big Brother Itaki, can you perform the shurikenjutsu technique used by Big Brother Aizuna? You know what I mean, by just using one shuriken he directed the trajectory of all kunaus. Can you do that Itaki Nai Aizen? Suzuki questions Itaki. Itaki hangs his head low in embarrassment and replies, I still can't do that. It requires very precise calculations, but I will be able to do it in a few more days. Then you are no fun, Itaki Nai Aizen. Teach me something else, which I don't know. Suzuki turns his head away and walks towards Naruto. Itaki sighs and looks at Suzuki's back. I am not a good big brother. I can't even train my little brother. What would big brother Aizuna do in this case? Aizuna laughs again as he clutches his stomach. This is way too hilarious. The genius Itaki is struggling to teach his younger brother. At least, there is something out there which Itaki is not good at. He jumps from the tree and walks towards the group. Shisui and Itaki notice him. Big brother Aizuna, you are back? It has been a while since I last saw you. Shisui walks in front of Aizuna and curiously looks at him. You must have trained away from the village for a year while doing your mission. I want to see how strong I am in your comparison. Let's have a spar Aizen and Aizen. Shisui proposes a spar between them. It's a good idea, Shisui. I also want to see the progress of both you and Itaki. Aizuna jumps back and takes a fighting stance. Come at me, both of you. Shisui and Itaki, both of you join fight with me together. Naruto and Suzuki near a corner of the training ground and excitedly look at their fight. Suzuki, who do you think will among them? Databia. Naruto questions Suzuki. Is there even a need to ask? Even a retard could guess the result. Obviously, Aizuna Naiaizen will win the spar. Even if he is fighting against Shisui and Itaki Naiaizen, Aizuna Naiaizen is a lot stronger than both of them. Suzuki smugly folds his hands in front of his chest. Oh, is that so? Hey, what do you mean by this? Do you want to say that I am a retard? Naruto grabs the collar of Suzuki. Do you want a beating, you knucklehead? Suzuki clutches Naruto's hand. Oh, yeah, you smartass. I will beat your ass. Naruto and Suzuki engage in a fight. Boom. Their fight is interrupted by a large explosion. Both of them leave each other's collars and look at the spar. Itake made some hand signs and fired a great fireball technique at Aizuna. Aizuna jumps and avoids the jutsu. Shisui makes some hand signs and shouts. Wind style, vacuum bullet. The wind amplifies the fireball jutsu and creates a much bigger fireball. Boom. The fireball rams in Aizuna. Dust and debris cover their vision. Shisui and Itake take out their kunao and raises their guard. Various kunaos and shurikens attack them. Both of them skillfully deflect all kunaos and shurikens. Behind you, Shisui warns Itaki. Itaki turns around and folds his hand to block a kick from Aizuna. The impulse from the kick sends him flying away. Shadow body flicker. Shisui disappears, and multiple shadow clones surround Aizuna. They start to constantly attack Aizuna as Shisui shifts his position within the real clones and the afterimage clones. So, Shisui has mastered this technique. He has officially become Shisui of the body flicker. Aizuna continue to block Shisui's attack and praises him. You have come a long way, Shisui. You have successfully mastered this technique and even improved it to pair with shadow clones. Well done. Thank you, Aizen and I Aizen. Victory will be ours. Oh, don't get too ahead of yourself. This is just warm up for three of us. Aizuna throws a shuriken at the various after images and clones and makes some hand signs. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu. Several shurikens appear in front of him and attack Shisui. All of his after images and clones disappear. The real Shisui blocks the shurikens with a kunao and appears in front of Aizuna. Itaki also joins him, and both of them look at each other and nod. Wow, so awesome. 
Aizen and Niaizen, Shisui Niaizen, and Itake Niaizen are so awesome. Databia. Naruto claps his hand in astonishment. They were just doing some warm-up. The actual fight hasn't even started. None of them have even activated their Sharingan yet. Suzuki chides Naruto. Oh, is that so? I thought they were seriously fighting against each other. Naruto scratches his head in embarrassment. That's why you are a knucklehead. What did you say? Mind repeating. Naruto angrily glares at Suzuki. Suzuki turns towards Naruto and looks him in eyes. Naruto, you are a big idiot. You have done it, Suzuki. Naruto punches towards Suzuki. Suzuki easily avoids the punch. Both of them engage in another round of their catfight. Itaki and Shisui seriously look at each other and nod. It's time to show our year's worth of extensive training to Aizen and Aizen. Yes, big brother Shisui. We have worked hard, it is time to test the results. Sherinan. Both of them activate their Sherinan and close the gap between them. Oh, Itaki has a three tomo Sherinan. He must have worked hard to master his Sherinan. Itaki and Shisui engage in a Taijutsu fight with Aizuna. He blocks their kicks with his hands and returns the favor by kicking them away. Shisui and Itaki somersaults in the air and prevents their descent. Itaki makes some hand signs. Fire style, Phoenix Flower Jutsu. He fires off many small fireballs at Aizuna. Water style, Water Dragon Jutsu. Aizuna creates a water dragon. The water dragon fires many water bullets at the fireballs and cancels them. Itaki jumps and avoids the water bullets. Oh, it's a distraction. So, where is Shisui? Shisui pops out of Aizuna's shadow and tries to stab him. Shadow assassination. Nice try, but I was a former Umbu captain. So, I am still your senior. Aizuna kicks Shisui away. You can't use Umbu techniques against an Umbu. Got you. Shisui smirks and disappears in a puff of smoke. Boom. A large explosion engulfs Aizuna. Shisui appears beside Itaki and stares at the explosion. Get ready to engage. It can't be over this easily. Aizuna appears unscathed from the explosion. Earth wall crumbles around him while he is holding a stack of paper bombs in his hand. Aizuna's left hand is coated in lightning chakra which nullifies the explosive chakra of paper bombs. He throws away the paper bomb and looks at them. Come on. Is this the best you can do? I have trained both of you in many jutsu and techniques, use them against me. If it is the extent of your growth, then I am disappointed. Aizuna disappears from their vision and reappears in front of them. He punches both of them in the gut. Finally, we caught you in our trap. Two of them smirks at Aizuna. Shisui's body turns into lightning and binds Aizuna. Itaki turns into many crows and flies away. The real Itaki and Shisui appear from the ground and cautiously look at Aizuna. There is a ceiling formula below Aizuna that roots him to the spot. The lightning binds him with the ceiling formula. We have laid this trap while fighting you. It was very difficult to pull off, but we successfully pulled it off. How is it? That's our cooperation, Ninjutsu. It is still a work in progress. Shisui looks at Aizuna in anticipation. Not bad, you got me. It is indeed an excellent technique, but there are many flaws to it. And I think you have forgotten one crucial factor. Let me remind you, I am a ceiling grandmaster. Such messy ceiling formula won't be able to hold me. Aizuna riles up his chakra and the ceiling formula crumbles. A figure appears behind Naruto and Suzuki and pulls their ear. Ah, ah. Both of them shriek in pain and look at the intruder. They are stunned to see the intruder and stutter. After stuttering for a while, only a single phrase escaped from their mouth. How? 98 A chat with Tsunade Aizuna pulled their ear. Both of them yell loudly. Ah, ah. It hurts, Aizuna Nai Aizen. Naruto rubbed his ear and excitedly looked at Aizuna. How are you here, Nai Aizen? He points at another Aizuna sparring with Shisui and Itaki. He is. Suzuki tilts his head in confusion. He is a shadow clone. All this time, they were fighting against my shadow clone all along. Suzuki looks at Aizuna with wide eyes. Wow, Aizuna Nai Aizen. You are so strong. Aizuna sits with them and watches the one-sided beating of Shisui and Itaki. After a while, both of them give up. The shadow clone dispels itself which shocks Shisui and Itaki. They stare at the empty space for a while. Aizuna appears in front of them. Both of you require a lot of training. I will stay here for a while, I will retrain you guys. Shisui and Itaki shakes their head and gets up. Aizuna uses medical ninjutsu to heal their wounds and bruises. He uses nature energy to rejuvenate their body. Let's go to Yakiniku Barbecue Restaurant. It's my treat. Aizuna leads them to Yakiniku Restaurant. Yay, I will eat lots of meat. Databia. Naruto jumps in excitement. Inside the restaurant. Aizuna, Shisui, Itaki, Naruto, and Suzuki grabs a corner and seat there. All of them orders lots of meat. Aizuna grills his meat as he stares at Shisui and Itaki. That earlier technique, have both of you joined the umbu. Aizuna puts many silencing seals around the place as he converses with them. Both of nods and Itaki replies. Yes, Aizuna and Aizen. After becoming a chunin, Hokage-sama suggested me to join the umbu. He wanted to fulfill the gap left by you with a talented individual. So, he chose me and Shisui and san We are a part of your former team row. So, Hokage-sama told you about my retirement from umbu. I have no qualms with that. Listen well, Umbu is a place of darkness. Don't get lost in the darkness and stray away from the light. Aizuna advises them. They continue to eat their food. Naruto and Suzuki start another fight. Naruto ate the best piece of meat from Suzuki's grill. 
I was saving the best for the last, you knucklehead. Suzuki angrily glares at Naruto. Oh, I thought you were full. So, I ate it. It's not a big issue. Here, you can have mine. Naruto offers half-grilled meat to Suzuki. Damn it, Naruto. Don't test my patience. Suzuki's angrily snaps at Naruto. Aizuna pulls their ear and silences them. Ah, ah, both of you stop fighting with each other. I have seen your training. You have done quite a good job. Naruto and Suzuki smile at these words. To make Shisui and attack his life miserable. Starting tomorrow onwards, I will personally train both of you for a while. Naruto and Suzuki hang down their head but after a while, they cheer in excitation. Don't be happy so early. You will beg me to stop tomorrow. Aizuna smiles wickedly. Suzuki, I have a bad feeling about this. Naruto pulls Suzuki's sleeve. Me too, Naruto. Suzuki gulps his saliva. Aizuna talks with Itaki and Shisui for a while. He advises them on some matters related to Ambu missions. Aizuna pays the bill and drags a sleeping Naruto on his shoulders. You three move ahead without me. I will drop Naruto at his place. Also, I have some other matters to handle. Okay, Aizuna and Aizen. Shisui nods to him. See you tomorrow, Aizuna and Aizen. Suzuki waves his hand. Aizuna carries Naruto towards the Senju compounds. He enters and knocks on the door. Shizun walks out of the house and greets him. It has been a while, Aizuna. Yes, it has been a while. Aizuna hands over Naruto to Shizun. He is fast asleep right now. Lay him on the bed. Shizun places Naruto on the bed and return to Aizuna. Where is Tsunade-san? Tsunade-sama is attending to patients in the Kanaha hospital. You will find her in her office. Shizun replies to him. Thank you, Shizun. Aizuna teleports inside Tsunade's office. Inside the Kanaha hospital. Tsunade held a report in her hand while inspecting it. The procedure was successful. I have collected lots of data from it. I think I can further improve this technique. But before that, I have to gather more data and it will only complete after the birth of the child. Suddenly wind flutters her cloth, and Aizuna appears out of nowhere. All the papers on the table flies around and Tsunade's anger rises. Yo, did you miss me? You bastard. Instead of a hug, a punch greets him. Tsunade punches him and Aizuna takes it like a man. He is sent flying out of the ceiling. Aizuna stands up and walks towards Tsunade. You are a brute, Tsunade. This is part of the reason you will turn into an old hag in few more years. What did you say? Mind repeating it. Tsunade has a tick mark on her forehead and she clenches her fist tightly. Okay, okay, my bad. I shouldn't have startled you. Aizuna raises his hands and gives up. Tsunade points at the mess of paper all around. She angrily glares at Aizuna. Put them all back together on the table. Yes, ma'am. Aizuna picks up the papers and arranges them on the table. He sits in front of Tsunade and stares at her. It has been a while since we last met and this is how you greet me. It is quite rude of you, Tsunade. Ha. Tsunade sighs and hands over the paper in her hand to Aizuna. I have been working on this technique. It is for your family, kid. You requested me to find a solution. Aizuna grabs the paper and reads its content. There is detailed information on surrogacy and in vitro fertilization. You did a superb job, Tsunade. I am thankful for your help. It brought happiness to my parents. Aizuna bows his head to Tsunade. It will be quite good kid if you can buy me a drink or two. I am broke again. Tsunade sighs again. Oh, I have a present for you, Tsunade. Aizuna pulls out the honey wine. It is the limited honey wine from Land of Honey. It is quite expensive and you need a fortune to afford it. He places the wine on the table. Tsunade hungrily looks at the wine and gulps her saliva. You are aware of my tastes. I might marry you if you take such good care of me. Tsunade jokes. Then let's go on a date. We will have a taste of this delicacy while enjoying our date. Aizuna bows in a gentleman and proposes to Tsunade. Tsunade chuckles and grabs his hand. Hold tightly. We are about to teleport. Aizuna pulls Tsunade in her embrace and teleports from the place. Whoosh, whiz. They appear inside a wooden cottage. Tsunade leaves his embrace and inspects the cottage. This feeling, this refreshing chakra. I have felt it somewhere before. Tsunade dashes towards the door and looks around. A vast expanse of trees appears in her vision. We are inside the Shikotsu forest. I knew this feeling. Tsunade turns around and stares at Aizuna. Mind explaining. It is nothing complicated. It is like this. Aizuna explains his journey to Tsunade. So, you are already a sage. You have quite a talent, kid. Also, don't tell me we are on the top of the giant tree of Shikotsu Forest. Aizuna nods his head. I trained here and slept in this cottage. It has a scenic view of it. Aizuna pulls out a table and chairs from the cottage and places them on the branch. Let's continue our date. I have something important to talk about. I hope you will listen to my request. Both of them sit on the table. Aizuna pulls out two wine glasses from his storage space and fills them with wine. Let's enjoy this wine while basking in this beautiful moonlight. Cheers. Aizuna sips his wine slowly as he talks with Tsunade. After talking about some pointless things for a while, he comes to the real matter. Tsunade, I want you to learn sage mode. You have the title of Sunin. It's time for you to become a real sage. Tsunade puts down her glass and stares at the moon. I don't want to. You are already a sage, with you and Jiraiya around. I doubt anybody will be able to harm our village. There is no need for me to learn sage mode. Ha. Aizuna sighs. He stares at Tsunade. Why is she so stubborn? 
Sunaid, I have some matters to disclose to you. I fought against an enemy with the eyes of Sage of Six Paths. He is very powerful and can easily destroy our village. I want to make sure our village remains safe, in case I am out of the village. Aizuna tries to convince Sunaid. Sunaid refuses to budge as she calmly drinks her wine. I am left with no choice. I have to mix some lies with the truth. Aizuna grabs Sunaid's hand, which startles her. Aizuna, no matter what, I won't train in sage mode. It was only because of you that I persisted this long in a village otherwise I would have already left the village. Aizuna places his hand on Sunaid's mouth and places a silencing seal. Sunaid angrily glares at him. You can get angry all you want. But first, listen to me. Our world is in danger. Yes, not just Kanaha but the entire shinobi world. 99 set in motion Sunaid comes down and stares at Aizuna. Explain. Then, listen. Sund, you must be aware of the great toad sage of Mount Mayaboku. Sunaid nods her head. He divined a prophecy for Jiraiya, a few years ago. Exactly, he summoned me to his abode and divined a prophecy for me. Many powerful otherworldly invaders will attack the shinobi world. He also prophesied about the fourth shinobi war. I am not sure of the exact time, but there will be a brutal war in the future. So, in order to prepare for the future, I want you to grow stronger. I don't want any friends and family to lose their lives in the war. Tsunade you are one of the few people close to me, I don't want you to get hurt. That's why Tsunade you should train in sage mode. Your creation rebirth seal is imperfect. With the help of sage mode, you will be able to perfect it and avoid the side effect. Tsunade closes her eyes as memories of previous wars flashed in her mind. The image of Dan and Noweke appeared in her mind, which overlapped with that of Izuna. Tsunade clenched her fist and resolutely stood up. Fine, I will start my training in sage mode. Izuna wraps his hand around Tsunade and teleports from the treetop. He appears in front of Katsuyu. Lady Katsuyu, I have convinced Tsunade. She will start her training from tomorrow onwards. Katsuyu nods her optical tentacles. Thank you, Izunakan. Okay, then farewell. Izuna places his hand on Tsunade's shoulder and prepares to teleport to Konoha. I will reverse summon myself tomorrow, Tsunade informs Katsuyu before teleporting away. Katsuyu looks at Izuna and Tsunade's pair. They would make a perfect couple if only Tsunade was a little younger. Katsuyu sighs and enters inside her cave. For the next few days, Aizuna trains both Suzuki and Naruto. Shisui and Itaki are out on an Ambu mission in Land of Woods. Hiruzen orders them to seek an alliance with the Prajna group and Ambu group of Land of Woods. Aizuna stares at Suzuki and Naruto, who are hanging upside down on a tree. He is training their chakra control. Aizuna has tied their hands and legs. They have to maintain their position without falling. Things are progressing way too faster. Since I have dealt with Danzo, there won't be any violent massacre. But the ambition of those old geezers of clan. Sigh. Aizuna remembers his previous clan meeting where he tried to talk the elders of Uchiha clan down. If they don't want to cooperate, then I can only let Shisui put them into a genjutsu and manipulate them. Aizuna sighs and continues to provide tips to Naruto and Suzuki. Both of them continue to fall and climb back again. Inside the private room besides Hokage office, Hiruzen, Koharu, and Homura sat around a table and discuss important matters. It has been a year since Danzo went missing. We assume that he is dead. Whoever did it, he did a clean job. Homura sighs and laments at Danzo's loss. But to think, Danzo had such dealings. He was involved in most of the schemes and plots against the village. We have been raising a serpent all along. His hunger for power was too intense. Koharu sighs and rests against the chair. Our era is over. It is time to pass our responsibilities to the next generation. What do you think about it? Hiruzen picks up his pipe and smokes. There is no suitable candidate for Hokage's position. However, I would like to make Sakumo Hei take as the new village elder. He will replace Danzo's position in the elder council. What are your thoughts on this matter? Hiruzen continues. Koharu and Homura contemplate before nodding in affirmation. We agree with your decision. Let us hold a council meeting tomorrow and declare it. Hiruzen takes a deep puff from his pipe and places it on the table. He takes out a report and presents it to them. Now, let's talk about serious matter. The elders of the Uchiha clan are planning something. Whatever it is, it is not favorable for the village. Homura picks up the report and reads it. We have no valid proof against them. We can't take any action recklessly. We need to increase surveillance of the Uchiha clan. He suggests. Yes, I will deploy another Ambu team to monitor them. Danzo's schemes have caused quite a problem for us. If we fail to deal with the situation effectively, then it may spell another ninja war. Kanaha isn't ready for another war. The previous war and the Nine Tails incident had exhausted our village. Hiruzen sighs again. I will think of a solution to this matter and inform you later. We can't allow another major incident in the village. Hiruzen stands up and walks towards his office. Kohara and Homura depart shortly. A month passed in the blink of an eye. Aizuna regularly visits Aunt Fumiko to check on her. Aunt Fumiko is in the fourth month of her pregnancy. It will be a while before the baby will be born. Aizuna regularly reports to Tsunade, who is training sage mode in Shikotsu Forest. Her progress is relatively slow compared to Aizuna. She has to use the slug oil to aid in the absorption of nature energy. Despite her efforts, she is still stuck at the first step of sage mode. It will take her a while to sense nature energy effortlessly. Aizuna teleports back to the village. He stands on top of the Hokage monument and stares at the village. 
Time to bid farewell. I will train for another four months and I will return before the birth of my sibling. Mount Mayaboko is still the ideal place to train in nature transformations. I have progressed a lot in the Kekai Tota release. Beside dust release and power release, I will be able to use another Kekai Tota soon. An icy blue flame appears in his hand. The flame flickers for a while before it extinguishes completely. This combination of fire release and ice release is still unstable. I have to figure out the correct chakra ratio and conditions to stabilize it. For now, I will name it as Arctic Release. Yes, Arctic Release seems suitable. Aizuna clenches his fist and teleports from the village. He reappears inside Mount Mayaboku. Fuk has Aka hops towards him and greets him. You are back, Aizuna boy. Will you continue your nature transformation training? You are quite close to attaining another Kekai Tota. I will help with your training. Fuk has Aka claps his hands and enters sage mode. Aizuna boy, I will able to sense changes in your chakra more easily this way. Now start your training. Aizuna activates his Sherinan to observe the ratio of chakra. He infused fire release from one hand and ice release from another. Blue flames forms in between his hands. Aizuna infuses more chakra into the jutsu to make it bigger. This surge of chakra destabilized the jutsu, and it exploded on him. Boom. One of his hand froze, and another got charred. He quickly healed his hand and started again. Boom. Again. Boom. Again. The training continues for another month. Aizuna continues to practice the arctic release. Many people spent their entire life to figure out a nature transformation. The second Tsuchikage developed the dust release and passed it on to the third Tsuchikage. It was his greatest achievement. Inside the Ambu headquarters, Hiruzen summons Shisui and Itaki. Both of them flickers before him and bow to him. They await further orders from Hiruzen. Hiruzen turns towards them and speaks. Shisui Uchiha and Itaki Uchiha. Both of you are an excellent member of Ambu. Your achievements in this past year marveled me. Your capabilities only lie short to Aizuna Uchiha. Hiruzen looks towards Shisui and nods. Your grandfather Kagamai Uchiha was a close aide of second Hokage Tobirama Senju. He was my senior and a close friend. You have grown quite well, and I hope you follow Kagamai's example. The will of fire burns brighter within both of you. I don't want the village to engulf in chaos and flames of hatred. Itaka hesitates for a while before he speaks. Hokage Sama, I have something to report to you. Hiruzen stares at Itaki and nods his head. Proceed. Hokage Sama, Fugaku Uchiha, the current leader of the Uchiha clan, and my father ordered me to join Umbu to seek information on the Elder Council. This way, I am acting as a spy for the clan. Hiruzen sighs and rubs his forehead. I can understand your sentiments. You are part of a clan, after all. But remember this, you are also a Kanaha citizen. This entire village is your family. You can't harm them for the sake of your close relatives. However, I am glad that you informed me about this. I will issue a mission to you now. From today onwards, you will act as a spy for me and monitor the Uchiha clan. You will be a double agent this way. Yes, Hokage-sama. I understand. I won't disappoint you. Itaka bows his head. Hokage-sama? Shall I consult with Aizen and Aizen? He was the former Umbu captain. Maybe, he could find a peaceful solution. Hiruzen sighs and reminds Shisui. Aizuna Uchiha is the genius of the Uchiha clan, but he isn't the son of clan leader. He is a disposable piece to elders. Aizuna also understands this. Sometimes, power isn't the only way to govern people. Power and politics go hand by hand. Aizuna Uchiha has power, but he has no political say. Or to be precise, he isn't interested in anything except training. This rank mission is just a disguise for him to train. It would be better if he isn't involved in this. If he turned against the village, then Kanaha will suffer quite a loss. I want to settle the matter peacefully. You two, keep updating me on the latest intel. Yes, Hokage-sama. Both of them nods and flickers out from the headquarter. Hiruzen sighs and stares at the moon. Things have turned quite complicated. I hope it will end peacefully. A slash n, I randomly came up with Arctic release. If anyone has a better suggestion, comment it down below. I will change the name if I liked it. 100 coup d'etat inside a secret chamber of Naka Shrine. Many Uchiha clan elders sit on around a table discussing their plans. Asahi, everything is ready, right? One of the clan elders questions a nearby Uchiha clan member. The clan member bows before the elder and reports. Yes, Ajirosama. We have secretly secured lots of kunaus and shurikens from the land of hot water. The preparations are ready, we just need orders from you. Ajiro nods to him and turns towards Fugaku. Fugaku, how are the preparations on your end? If we want to gain control of the village, then we need to deal with Hokage and his Umbu guards. Have you gathered the necessary intel regarding this matter? We have to finish him in a single blow or else things will blow out of proportion. If it alerts other clans, then we would have to face against a combined assault of many other clans. Fugaku looks at the group of clan elders. So, things have turned out this way. Father died because of his sickness, and I became the next clan head. But these clan elders manipulated various members of the clan to gain power and control. I don't even have a say in this matter. It took me a while to realize their ambition. It's too late now, I can only play along with them. I hope Uchiha clan won't suffer much in this conflict. Fugaku nods towards the group of clan elders and informs them. My elder son, Itaki Uchiha, joined Umbu a year ago. He had collected the necessary intel during this time. 
All the Umbu's patrol duty, team formations, members, and all such. I will call him to provide the information. Fugaka whispers something to a nearby Jounin. The Jounin walks out of the meeting room and comes with Itaki in tow. Itaki, present the intel to clan elders. Itaki bows and greets the clan elders. He forks out a scroll from his pocket and passes it to Ajiro. This is the intel I have collected this past year. There is detailed information about Umbu members, their patrol duties, and even their jutsus. I have inspected every last detail. Ajiro schemes through the scroll and rolls it and passes it to another elder. You have quite a talented son, Fugaku. He had grown in an excellent young man. His wits and intelligence remind me of your father, Fukushi Uchiha. He was such a great man, but he lacked ambition. Otherwise, we wouldn't have fallen in such a state. Let's show the power of the Uchiha clan to these old fools of Konoha. Ajiro clenches his fist. For the clan. Yes, for the clan. The rest of the clan elders follow his lead. So, he is the perpetrator of this incident. Itaka silently stares at Ajiro. I have to report this to Hokage-sama. The clan is on the verge of coup d'etat. If this continues then civil war will erupt in Konoha. I can't allow Suzuki to suffer in the misery of civil war. I have to stop them. Itaka silently retreats. The discussion continues. Ajiro gathers all the members of the Uchiha police force and addresses them. My Uchiha clan members, the village, had discriminated against us. The second Hokage Tobirama Senju hated us. He isolated us to the boundaries of the village. We bear with it. We wholeheartedly served the village, kept the prisoners of Kanaha in check. We secured the village as police force, but what did we get in return? Ajiro clenches his fist and slams it on the table. Hatred and suspicion. The villagers fear us for our prowess. They blame the Nine Tails incident on our clan. Forced us to move to the outer boundaries of the village. Not only this, they even left their loyal dog on our tail. Many of you must have noticed the dogs of the village sniffing around our clan. They forced us in a corner. We must retaliate and restore the former glory of Uchiha clan. Ajiro raises his hand passionately. Yes, for the clan. All the Uchiha police force members yell in unison. For the clan. For the clan. Fugaku looks at the members of the Uchiha police force with a conflicted gaze. They are a herd of sheep and Ajiro is their shepherd. It is too late to knock sense into them. Before I could gain the support of the clan members after assuming the position of clan head, a hiro had already swayed their opinion. I am a clan head only in name. Father, only if you were alive, then things wouldn't have played out like this. Fugaku sighs and turns towards Ajiro. Clan elder Ajiro, how long would it take to prepare for the last confrontation? Soon, it will happen soon. We will set in a week or two. I will inform you later. For now, we will discuss the intel and devise a strategy to effectively deal with Hokage. The discussion continues as the clan elders plots a plan. Inside the Hokage office, Itaka bows before Hiruzen as he reports. I have the latest intel of my spy mission. I would like to inform you of this matter. Hiruzen nods and waves his hand to dismiss the Umbu guards. Later, inside the private room beside Hokage's office, Hiruzen, Koharu, and Shimura sit around a table as they listen to the report of Itaki. If they are going to start a revolution and usurp our power, we have no choice but to judge the Uchiha as traitors of the leaf. Koharu concludes. Don't rush to such a decision. Hiruzen interrupts her. We must take measures to avoid the mayhem. Homura agrees with Koharu. Even if we want to stop the revolution of Uchiha, taking on the Uchiha will be no simple task. There's got to be some sort of strategy we can use. We should join forces with other clans and launch a surprise attack on Uchiha from behind. It will be over in no time. Koharu presents her opinion. I want to settle it with words before force. Hiruzen towards Itaki and orders. Itaki, buy me some time, however little it may be. Yes, Hokage-sama. Itaki nods and disappears from his spot. Later inside Umbu headquarters. Shisui and Itaki bows before Hiruzen as Itaki reports to Hiruzen. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha will start their revolution from next week. We have six days to stop this coup. Hiruzen sighs and rubs his forehead. I can't allow the village to fall this easily. It's a failure on my part. If the coup starts, it will embroil the village in a civil war. Our forces will weaken considerably, and other nations won't sit idly. They will use this opportunity to wage war on Kanaha. Kanaha is the strongest hidden village with the most resources. If the coup happens, the fourth shinobi war will be around the corner. But this time, it will be all nations against the land of fire. I don't want such an ending. Itaka continues his report. Hokage-sama, the Uchiha clan elder Ajiro, is the perpetrator behind the coup. If we can deal with him, then we can stop the coup. Hmm, that might be a possibility. But I am sure you are aware of the consequences of this decision. Itaka nods and continues. It won't be enough to quell the hatred build up among the Uchiha clan members. It will only fan the flames and will inevitably lead to a coup. Thus, we are only postponing the inevitable. Shisui quietly listens to their conversation as he is stuck in a dilemma. Should I tell them about the abilities of my Manjikyo Sherinan? Aizun and Iizen warned me to not disclose them. He said, the power of your Sherinan is way too great. It can lead to the greed of power-hungry people who will try to hunt you down to gain your eyes. So, don't disclose your eyes to anyone under any circumstances. But I have to think of a solution to prevent the downfall of Uchiha clan. Shisui continues to ponder over the matter. After pondering for a while, he concludes. 
For the sake of my family, my friends, and my clan, I have to do it. He turns towards Hiruzen and speaks. Hokage-sama, I have a solution to our problem. Huh. Hiruzen is startled by Shisui's words. He questionably stares at Shisui. Explain. Shisui activates his Mangekyo Sharinan and reveals them to Hiruzen and Itaki. Hiruzen is surprised to see the Mangekyo Sharinan. Mangekyo Sharinan, the forbidden power of the Uchiha clan. Image of Madara Uchiha pops in Hiruzen's mind and his spine shivers. The ability of my Mangekyo Sharinan allows me to control a person without their discretion. I will use this ability on Eijiro and manipulate him to quell the revolution. This way, the Uchiha's coup will be repelled. Then slowly, by manipulating Eijiro the hatred of Uchiha clan members will be quenched. Hmm. Hiruzen ponders for a while. It seems to be a quite feasible option. Then, Shisui Uchiha and Itaki Uchiha. I will issue this SS rank mission to both of you. Infiltrate the residence of Eijiro Uchiha and manipulate him to repel the rebellion of the Uchiha clan. The survival of the village depends on this mission. Failure isn't an option. Yes, Hokage-sama. Shisui and Itaki bows to Hiruzen and flickers out. I hope things will play out as planned. I don't want a repeat of the first Hokage's incident. Hiruzen sighs and looks towards the blue dread moon.